Hello everyone and welcome to the Light Bringers Podcast, episode 36, season 2. Did you start? Is it start? Can they oh, hear you? Oh no, you ruined it. <laughs> I'm leaving it. I'm stopping. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. I don't care anymore. I had to do it for boots. I had to do it for boots. I didn't do it last week. I didn't interrupt. I was good, but this week it had to happen. It's okay. Someone had to be the person. Like, <laughs> if we're having any sound issues, let us know in the chat as well, please. That would be muchly appreciated. I hope you're doing very, very well. We have an awesome, awesome amount of guests with us today. We're going to do a little bit of an intro and talk about Guild Wars 2 and how we felt about it in 2022, because why not? A bit of a year in review, if you will. And we have some amazing guests that are going to do that with us. We have two people returning that we haven't also not seen for a bit of time as well. While I try to work out why OBS is moving things around, I swear this happens as well all the time. OBS just like had this wicked update there's just so many windows and I'm like trying to change things. It's just, it's just, it's all going pear shaped. It always does everyone. It's okay. Hello everyone in the chat and also on our panel of guests. How are you doing today? Are we all good? Are we all well? All having a good day? Mm -hmm. No one's going to say anything. Good staying warm. There you go. See? That was Aurora Peachy everyone. If you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Aurora Peachy was on the very first Lightbringers. Was I? You were. The you first were the very one? first one. Mm -hmm. There was you, and there wow. was Alex, and there was... I can't remember her name. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she did. wow, we're old. Yeah, that was that was 84 years ago. It was. Yeah. We're looking Something good like for that. 84. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I lost a bit more hair since then. Otherwise, mm -hmm. doing good. <laughs> okay, we've also got Rava as well, who's joining us again. He was, uh, he's been with us once or twice in the past, but is now feeling a lot, a bit better and is able to kind of join us again. So I'm glad your health issues are kind of improving, we'll say. So it's welcome back as well. Thank you so okay. much. I'm so happy to be back. Yeah, we're hyped to have you here. And... <laughs> We've also got Phonix and uh, Rooker as well. Sup, bitches. I told it you, going? it wasn't me who swore first. It was someone else. What we're going to do is we're going to do a cheeky bit of an intro first, as we always do. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do, where you do it, sell yourself. There will be links in the description below if people do have a link for the game that you can purchase as well. They'll be in there if you want to support them, especially over Christmas. And also, uh, you know, all their stuff for Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and whatnot. We'll chuck all of that stuff in the description below. Aurora Peachy, tell us about yourself. What do you do? Where do you do it? Timings and stuff? What do you do? Me? You. I'm that girl with all the toys. <laughs> That's it. You are. You have so many. That, I, yeah. That's it. Don't say any. People I'd, just come to see I'm the toys. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, you have, there is so much behind you. I, I need to get advice on display <laughs> casing because maybe just mm -hmm. half of one of them, though. <laughs> Rather than... this is, there's five of these, so you can just get one. Jesus. Just, just one. So, you know, that'd be fine. I... So many. <laughs> That's, thank you, thank you, Eternal. Peachy's Toy Store, where nothing's for sale. <laughs> to look at it, like a museum, yeah. but exactly. Not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for adults. That works. Totally. <laughs> I'm an adult. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I make a, a, a stream. I, uh, I, I've been doing Guild Wars 2 as, as it relates to Guild Wars 2. Um, if you're a yeah. newer Guild Wars 2 fan, um, I'm one of them older Guild Wars 2 peeps, uh, content creators. Um, but, uh, I, I am obsessed with like the lore of Guild Wars 2 and, uh, I, I love playing all of the new releases and new expansions and reacting to it and theorizing and, uh, all of that is really kind of my, my passion for Guild Wars 2, as well as, um, Snarkle Goldclaw and, uh, Cast Story. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yay, they're married. Um, <laughs> almost. Yeah. But, uh, so, hey, so, we got yeah. that wrong, don't worry. We actually got that wrong. We had a whole podcast like, where we were just like, two of us versus the other two. Like, basically, no, they're married. No, they're not. And uh, Well, we, we thought, were they, we, yeah. was we it lost. an engagement or was it an actual wedding? That yeah. was the big debate. We, we lost. Uh. But, <laughs> secretly married. They're roommates, either way. 
Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, all the things at Aurora Peachy, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I was gonna say Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. <laughs> I think you have got Facebook. I've got one that no, I, I do, made actually, like two or three years, like ten years ago. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I stream a lot of JRPGs. Um, as much as ArenaNet owns my soul, Square Enix also owns my soul. So, um, any of those games? Um, yeah, play play a lot of that. And um, like I awesome. said, any Guild Wars two release that comes out, I'm there. There. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. It is awesome to have you back, my friend. No, Aurora Peachy for a long, long time. Long I'm very time. glad you're here. Um, okay, rather licious, or rather. I don't know if you're going by the licious part anymore, uh, because uh, you've just, or have you shortened it for, you know, Only on purposes? Twitch. I couldn't I change it for the other ones. Um, but, um, yeah. Hi, I'm Rava. I'm the weirdo who did too much science in her life. Um, so much so <laughs> that I had a PhD. <laughs> Just quality. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'm trying not to be like sound like a like you know like a, <clears throat> like Farron. Um and uh, yeah, I stream solely Guild Wars two. Uh, I mainly do raids and fractals and all that um, uh, end game content. But uh, I've recently started playing Living World Season 1 and I nice. have fallen in love over with the game because when I started the game, couldn't understand anything because I didn't know who was rocks, rocks and stuff. And now I know and I love it so much. And uh, yeah, I stream about? very early for Americans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on Twitch and I have a YouTube rather delicious and that's, that's, that's it. Awesome. Yeah. Check out the description <laughs> below for both Aurora Peaches <laughs> and Rava's stuff, everyone. Appreciate Rava being here as well. It is currently Christmas Day for Rava as well, everyone. So make sure you wish them Merry Christmas in the chat as well. Appreciate it, peoples. Uh -huh. That would be awesome. Yeah. And generally Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy holidays, whatever you do, whatever you celebrate, even if you're not celebrating, I hope you have some break and rest at the moment as well. Because it's a good time to do that right now as well. Rookery. Just a little bit about where you are, where you are, where you, what you do. Oh, um, I'm, I'm so good at that. I'm in my chair at my computer, <laughs> um, in a house in Chicago. Nearly a hundred, nearly a hundred episodes of this is still, still <laughs> suck at this. <laughs> still wow! Suck. And just, wow! No, no, not you, me. Wow. I was talking to myself. <laughs> I was talking I, about myself. Now, <laughs> saying you, you, you suck at it as well. Rook. <laughs> Well, you heard it here, everybody. Yep. It's me, Rook. I suck at everything. <laughs> but if you want to watch, if you want to watch that, yes. because who wouldn't? Uh, you can come hang out with with me while I suck at everything from inventory management. That's actually accurate. To playing the it's games true. that I love, um, mostly MMORPGs, particularly oh, Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars Two. I love MMOs as a genre. We talk about them. I shoutcast them. I host events for them. We do all sorts of things. I just got done uh, actually shoutcasting for WoW's Race to World First, which was pretty amazing. Uh, but if I'm not playing MMOs, I'm probably talking about them somewhere, be it on my own Twitch or YouTube channels or on the two podcasts that I co-host, Aetherite Radio and uh, this one. I guess I could say, would you say I co-host it, Jebro? Am I allowed I mean, to say that? I mean, you're pretty much here <laughs> now every week. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. We've but got I do... like a bunch of co <laughs> hosts now so yeah we've yeah. got a core crew for sure yeah it's coincidental i just show up every week in jebro size but lets me on the call <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> so um if you would like to again come watch me be terrible at everything um you're welcome to anytime i'm rookery everywhere r-o-o-k-u-r-i the only exception is on twitter uh, where it's rookery underscore and we've been doing a little bit of variety recently i've been doing a whole playthrough of dragon age inquisition uh nice. because while i love mmos i fell in love with them because i love rpgs that's like my huge element that i grew up playing love playing and the mmo part just let me expand that out so oh uh, we're doing a little variety we might have some more through next year too before some more expansions come out in these games that we play all the time and love so yeah if we get time okay. <laughs> because there's too many I've got like 10 games I'm revolving around with like winter events and I'm like, yeah, I'm just doing the same thing every day now. Um, and also, last but certainly not least, an awesome to have you here, Rookery. You definitely don't suck for that. Neither for sure. do you. Thanks so much. 
Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. The Crown Herald, aka Fornax. Welcome back. Is one of our core crew as well. Hello, how are you? Tell us what you do, where you do it. And your uh, whole, whole thing vibe right now is very good. Loving it. If you can't see the stream right now because you're listening audibly, you should go to youtube.com slash uni and watch it. Okay, or Spotify. You can watch it there. And you can see all the faces that Crown Herald or Fornax is making right now. Tell us the things, Fornax. <laughs> Hello, it's lovely to be here. It's lovely to meet Peachy. Uh, it's lovely to say hi to Rav again. We haven't seen each other, talked to each other for ages. Yeah. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody, or happy holidays, however you celebrate the Winter Festival. Um, and yeah, I do stuff on YouTube. I do occasionally stuff on Twitch. Um, I love Guild Wars 2. I love the lore. And I say the quiet bits out loud sometimes, and I'm a bit inappropriate on occasion. Sometimes. So, yes, so, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, okay. yes. Very awesome Big, to have you vaguely here. Vaguely professional, <laughs> even. Holy fuck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Failure. Failure. Okay. Well, let's just don't corrupt me too much, okay? I'm very innocent minded. Very, to. very, uh -huh. you know, Aurora Peach has known me <laughs> probably the longest here and knows that I'm very innocent. Unfortunately, no. Yeah. Well, that, there is that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, guests wonderful to have you here what i want to firstly do actually is we are going to talk about guild wars 2 in 2022 as a little bit of a review but quickly i want to ask you a question now uh, which kind of is a little bit mental health oriented around the holiday season because i said we're gonna do q a we're gonna do it at the end but i'm just gonna just a quick question because i think this is something that people just generally have a lot of problems with around i'm a mental health counselor as people kind of do know and don't know and these questions are things that you know kind of talk about around this kind of time of year because it's all happy and joyful it's not always that way for everyone but if it is what do you do around the holidays how do you do kind of look after yourself there's all the stress that goes on with family and um you know all these things we have to kind of attend and gifts and stuff like how just very briefly how do we kind of take care of ourselves over christmas no it's like not guild war 2 specific but we like we like to have these little bits of mental health stuff and i'd be you know, silly not to really <laughs> doing what I do. Um, and also because we talk about that a lot and we talk about accessibility, we talk about these things. So who, who wants to go first and like, drop in? What do you do to look after yourself over like holiday season? As well, everybody is like, no, I'm not. I, yeah. <laughs> I just dropped this on everyone. It is in the document, but not till later. So I'm just going to um, drop it. And chat, join I'm in. Gonna, I, I actually use gaming a lot. So um, okay. I live... I've lived many, many years away from my family. So Christmas has always been a bit of a get in the car, drive hundreds of miles, run around trying mm. to see 17 million different relatives at once and drop off gifts and kids and etc. cetera. Um, so my TLC is actually like squirreling myself away in a corner with my laptop, usually at my mother-in-law's house somewhere hidden in a corner playing Final Fantasy or Guild Wars 2 or some cozy games on my Switch. So yeah. That's, awesome. that's my my little piece of sanity is actually gaming so yeah i can relate i can relate to that I, I feel like that's the big thing right you have to make sure that you are giving yourself time for the holidays too not your family and yourself not uh you know whatever commitments whatever other additional things you need to do and yourself but just yourself and i think in recent years that's been really the big thing for me because it was a big adjustment having like two families to juggle for the holidays. Not mm. everybody, you know, whatever your situation is, it was hard enough when it was just my family to make it through the holidays, let alone now when we do this huge gauntlet of holiday activities, um, because I grew up with a pretty quiet, small family. So it was really different having like big families and all sorts of commitments and huge like periods of time where everybody expects like we all do stuff the whole week. And it's amazing because it can be so great and it can be really fun. Um, but at the same time, I found that I would run myself ragged just trying to do whatever I thought I needed to do at the end of the season or whatever I thought like were commitments I had to live up to or, you know, things naturally too. I think kind of get quieter. They get 
it, it's a little bit, it might get busier for you at work, but when it comes to a lot of the social events or other things or stuff you're really looking forward to or game releases, like, sure, we get some for the holidays, but I feel like a lot of times around this time of year, I start to feel a little bit quieter and, and lonelier in a, in a weird kind of way, even while there's all this other stuff going on and all these other people or holiday events or family commitments. So I've recently just really tried to make sure that I'm making time just for me, that if I'm scheduling holiday stuff, I'm also scheduling holiday stuff just for me, whether that's that I decide I'm going to cook something I really know I'm going to enjoy eating and it's just mm. for me and nobody else and I'm going to have that one night yeah, or I, I stock up on my favorite teas and hot chocolates and all those sorts of things mm. um, so that I have those at the ready and I can have them. And yeah, just like you, Fortnax, I usually pick a game or two that I like, that's my comfort that season and I'll, I'll be playing it and I'll spend extra time giving myself some days and and some time off just to really enjoy it or read a book I've been putting off all year. You know, those sorts of things where it's like, okay, there's also other stuff going on, but I'm going to make sure that I give myself time to relax at the end of the year too. Good. Love it. DJ Rava? Yeah. No, absolutely. You got you to gotta put yourself first. And like you said, there's all these expectations and, mm. and you just got to learn that if, if you don't live up to everybody else's expectations, that's on them to react to that. You got to do you. You got to do what's best for you first for anybody else. You're the most important because you can't be there for them. You can't fulfill any of their expectations. Uh, not that it's your responsibility to if you're not taking care of yourself. So find your games, find your comfort shows, your pets, your, you know, the family members who do mean the most to you and understand you and understand that you need that self, uh, that self time and care and, you know, focus on that, focus on you, focus on that. Um, I, I know with the with the winter, you know, the winter's coming and um, the weather can have a huge effect on you. And I just I, I not always the best at it, but I try my best to, you know, get some sunlight and my puppies. The sun's coming in the window. My puppies are laying there. I will I will lay down on the floor right next to them and be like, yeah, guys, let's get that sun. <laughs> <laughs> let's get the sun right now. <laughs> so I follow them around, do what they're doing. They know. <laughs> That's a good idea. I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting some light, which is difficult. SAD, uh, seasonal disorder is, is a thing. Um, it does affect some people. So even if you can't get outside, get yourself one of those kind of lights, those natural lamps, you can get their help for as well. Um, or vitamin D sorry? also helps. Also, or vitamin uh, yes, D is also absolutely. very helpful. Absolutely, yes, yes. In, the, in Seattle specifically, like whenever you go to the doctor, like everyone in Seattle is vitamin D deficient. So like... Get a get going on yeah. that because <laughs> it's you know the weather is a kind of like England here. Um, Actually, vitamin D and vitamin K, so that the additional it, it, it helps I like, stave off integrate. the osteoporosis. Yeah, yeah, that's really good actually. For next, you're right. Yeah. Okay, rather. I'm a nerd. I'm a proper nerd. <laughs> I am too, so I love it. Um, proper nerds on this um, show. I'm gonna <laughs> like my. My Christmas is a bit different because I, I've lived overseas and away from my family since I was 17. So I mm. never got to really develop kind of Christmas um, uh, traditions. But um, wow. what I do the most is I just watch the Lord of the Ring extended version, like all three of them. That's my Christmas movie. And uh, and that makes like me feel like a sense of home and habit because mm. I didn't get to develop that with others. And it makes me feel a bit less sad. But um, oh. no, it's it's fine. Like you know, family's far away, and as long as they're all happy and like yeah. they know, I'm just happy jamming with Gandalf, and that's the thing. But I think it's a good reminder to also know that uh, some people can't celebrate with family, or like mm -hmm. you know, they don't have their family. So it's really important that they focus on themselves, but they also know that they can reach out to people if loneliness gets really overwhelming and their thoughts mm -hmm. gets bad. Like, you know. Please reach out. Like, sorry, you got a little bit serious, but the no, holidays no, is no, no, no. a time where it's difficult for some people. That's exactly why I asked the question. Because I, I have yeah. this thing myself. I'm on my own. I've spent Christmas uh, on my own for the last two or three years. I, I know what that feels yeah. like. And, you know, I moved here, got divorced. <laughs> After I got married, obviously, I didn't move here and get divorced and got married. <laughs> there was an order there. <laughs> uh and things didn't work out and i was like do i stay and it's like well if i stay i'm gonna have to celebrate some of these things on my own maybe and like i can have friends but it's a lot more difficult nowadays um especially when you're older and yeah we've got friends but i kind of like christmas on my own now honestly like it's just a weird thing it's like 
I really spend what I do and and I, you just have these traditions really really great what Robert said like having that tradition every year of doing something specific I always say Star Wars now on on Disney plus like and I've got yeah. Andor ready to just binge like and I'm gonna oh it's so good it's so good it's yes, so good I'm looking forward so to good. I keep hearing I haven't about seen it. it yet I need to watch Binge it Chris. oh my um, god best make a... Star Wars ever best and I'm including oh, okay. Empire I'm and I'm a, a diehard fan also, yeah. can I just say that I think there's a weird expectation around big holidays like this yes. that you have yeah. to be happy and everything's mm -hmm. great. No, guys, no. It's yeah, fine. It's, if you feel like yeah. shit, feel like shit. It's fine. It's fine. You're allowed. You don't have to pretend yeah. to be everybody's happy bloody elf. No, stuff mm -hmm. it. You, you do you, boo. You do you. That's and you don't you have to have... Have... as you want. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to have like some beautiful, wonderful time that's meaningful with your family. Like, I love my family. I hate holidays with my mother. It is never ending. I'm pretty sure she knows this. It's like, it is a whole other thing when we get together and it's a holiday. It is not like fun. And I think for me, <laughs> it's not. I told, it is not I even told, fun. no, I told my partner, I was like, when we got together, I was like, I'm so sorry. You will to spend the holidays with my family. Your family, it's a wonderful, magical thing from a Hallmark movie. My family, it is gonna be stressful. It's gonna suck. It's gonna be really mm. quiet. It's gonna have like a weird tone to it. It's not gonna be what you think it is. We're gonna go to make a pie and somehow end up yelling at each other. Like, it, that's what it's going to be. Mm. Every single thing that should be straightforward oh, and filled with family yeah. spirit, <laughs> it's like, it will not be that. It will instead, suck out the joy of the holiday for yeah. you. Yeah. And I was like, and that's just how it is. And after our first holiday together, Bebop was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, I told you that there it is. So like, I think for a long time that sat on me kind of funny too, where I would go, this thing that everybody else has that I don't have. And I wish that I had that. Um, and it made it feel like the season was less because of it. And I think like, take care of yourselves and make the season like you were both saying make it what you want it to be mm -hmm. is it the time of year that you rewatch yeah. the extended cut of lord of the rings hell yes that is an amazing time it is so good you need a lot of food to get yes. through it and you best be prepared because it's <laughs> 20 million hours like do you want, like what about it makes it special to you what makes you feel like you get a moment to cozy up to bundle up to take care of yourself to you know like that's what matters it doesn't matter these other things they may or may not be there or your family may be friends or whatever it is right but because you don't have that doesn't mean that your season has to be less than you can find other ways to make mm -hmm. it something that's yours yeah i like um i don't i don't cook i try i learn to cook a little bit but like you know being my own now is like i want to make different meals and healthier stuff but on christmas day i get like a um, what's his name? The English cook guy, oh, Gordon Ramsay. Like I cook his one of his cooked turkeys every year because turkey is very much English Christmas, and I like I buy a massive turkey. I'm talking about like family feeding turkey, and I it's it's like ginormous and it's got like garlic butter and stuff. It's proper time where I get like really keen on the cooking and like put the lemons in. They really start, you know, just veggies and everything it's so it's been so good every year and i did it early this year the shopping and i take a lot of effort to do that and that's my day and in, in the star wars and stuff and just chilling but also streaming i might stream it actually for fun because it might be interesting yeah. for people to see that prep but i do stream a bit on christmas day as well just for a couple of hours just to say hello to people catch up how's your christmas all that kind of thing play a game for a bit because i've got to do my dailies anyway so you know <laughs> yeah, i've got to do those dailies gotta get those skin all right i'm gonna talk let's talk about some guild wars 2 thank you very much for the uh, input everyone i hope that you know gave you a little bit of um inspiration at home i know we, we're kind of this probably won't come <laughs> i'm out everywhere by christmas day but it's still the holidays you know you can still take that advice in and just generally as well just take care of yourself do what you have to do to take care of you you know your family they'll deal with all the things they've got to deal with in those situations if you want to reject yourself out of there just take yourself out of there you are looking after yourself you are not being selfish that is the key thing to remember in your self-care uh yeah change it reframe those negative thoughts that you have about yourself um it takes time and practice but it's, it's definitely doable uh and also just shout out to Kruf 
we can come today we are very sad you aren't here very last minute was unfortunately not is not very well this week so please give them our good wishes in chat and obviously boots who is our other uh, usual person that joins us as well um not able to be here but is celebrating with family i believe so it's good to have everyone here who was able to come today so thank you very much let's talk about guild wars 2 oh yes let's go let's let's talk about guild wars 2 so this week this year this week oh good lord that would have been a lot this year we had ender dragons we had 10 years of guild wars 2 we had steam we had living world season one redo we had world v world restructuring we probably had some other stuff that i can't remember but those are the main bits and bobs and first of all we're going to talk about just generally about these things and how they were for guild wars 2 in 2022 because according to arena net and the dragons basically got more people playing guild wars 2 since like 2015 which is like heart of fawns time which was the first expansion with raids uh and it's the first kind of time since then where they've had the biggest impact in terms of numbers um so what did this expansion do for like guild wars 2 what did it really do for like kind of the player base for or for the community no it's a very broad question so take that one as how how you will right now <laughs> very broad oh my gosh i mean this year was just buck the wild just the expansion I'm so, I mean, I mean, <laughs> this year was marked by the expansion. Yes, like, let's be yes, real. Yes, yes, true. And the the expansion in and of itself is technically, I mean, an ongoing thing for this year, right? With all of our additional content that falls under that umbrella. But I mean, I think that the expansion is really what just revitalized so much. I mean, it was a phenomenal expansion. The game has always had an incredible community. It has always had strengths, but. I think there is nothing like a new expansion release to just affect the entire tone for the year, right? It's unbelievable because everybody was feeling so excited, um, all of the stuff leading up to it, all of the hype, the expansion itself, so phenomenal. Seeing all these incredible areas we had only been talking about for years, getting all this incredible follow-up content that falls under the umbrella of what the expansion has brought and the ongoing content that's kind of a part of that. This has been a huge thing for Guild Wars 2, not only to just wrap up a story that has been going for a while and start a new one for a community, um, you know, some of whom are veterans and some of whom are brand new players who just came in off of Steam or elsewhere. Um, this has been a huge moment. And I think it was one of those things where we heard a lot kind of ominously, this will be make or break for Guild Wars 2 or, you know, it's been so long since we had an expansion or all these things that I was in the background and I think a lot of us were going, Guild Wars 2 is fantastic. Whatever they decide to do moving forward, it's going to be fine. But this expansion, I think, surpassed expectations in a way that just, I think, was the boldest, best statement of, hey, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is an amazing game. We have a lot to offer. We have 10 more years. We have, you know, a whole future ahead. And um, I cannot, I mean, this expansion, I think, did incredible things for this game and this community on so many levels. It's been amazing to witness. And uh, even on Twitch, I think we felt that, you know, people coming in, so many new players, so much, uh, you know, of the old audience even coming back. It's had mm -hmm. these huge ripple effects. Very true. Anyway, like, what a way to mark the 10th anniversary of the game this year, the, the conclusion of the Dragon Saga. And I think that's one mm -hmm. of the big things that brought a lot of people back was uh, not only the conclusion of the saga, uh, but uh, Hantha. And I think they've kind of kept that in their back pocket for like, they wanted to wait until the right time to bring back Hantha and <laughs> bring back all of those years, players. They waited 10 and, years, and, and, and what a time to do it. It <laughs> yeah, was like absolutely. the perfect time yeah. to bring that back. You bring back the nostalgia, you, you, you introduce these gorgeous environments and waiting until the tech is at a place where they can properly make things like new kinek and make mm. it grand and big and uh impressive and and so uh just bravo like with the timing and um the marketing and, and everything very true and the uh and the, the awards it's gone as well as Kruf mentioned in the chat just as yeah. a, an additional thing like you know most you know player choice kind of awards from like mmorpg and there's some others as well um sorry rafa girl uh there's one thing that also was brought by end of dragon is the accessibility talk because you remember that um mm -hmm. end of um end of dragon meta sorry mm -hmm. 
And it was just like, there was a lot of people saying, this is very difficult. We, we can't dedicate that many hours. We can't really benchmark and stuff. And so that really opened up the talk to accessibility and like having those low intensity build, which then was followed by massive changes in classes and buffs and everything, Mm. making it easier for the players. And then you had like, for example, even the talk about April, you know, the mesmer with, um, she had uh, a, a, a a leg, right? A, j- mm-hmm. a jade leg, like mm. like. So there was just like a weaving through the year. All those uh, we welcome <laughs> all kinds of players, and we want to make this game as easy for people as possible, so that mm-hmm. they can enjoy themselves a lot. So mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool throughout the year. That made me think too, uh, just the inclusivity of End of Dragons and the expansion as well, um, as we already touched on at the start of stream and as sure. a big Kaz Jory fan alongside Aurora Peachy. Uh, it, my gosh, did I weep like a child, like a baby <laughs> when we had the moment at the end where we had in the only MMO that I play. I mean, ESO has some representation, but again, it's just kind of like, and this is good, but it's it's just kind of rolled into the game. It's just something that's a fact of the world. People have same-sex partners, and that's great in and of itself. But this was like the first time I've seen in a mainline MMO, a same-sex couple who in the main story quests get this massive moment to just recognize their love for one another, to have this marriage, to have this moment. I it, that in and of itself from the expansion was a huge statement, let alone all these other levels of yes, accessibility and inclusivity. And this world of Tyria has always been that. It has yeah. always been that. I mean, I think they had the first on screen kiss for a same sex couple in an MMO back in Living Season One when Kaz and Jory kiss, which we just had re implemented into the game. So to have this point uh, where the expansion itself really definitively just said that, like, hey, we are putting this out there. And a lot of other companies, a lot of other games, I think would be like, ooh, but sales though, or whatever weird stuff that's Mm. so frustrating when it comes to these kinds of big, you know, um, releases uh, and monetary concerns and the shareholders. But like, Guild Wars 2, I think is just like, yeah, screw that. Like, here here it is. (laughs) The world is diverse, it's a fantasy. And even in the real world, we have this level of representation because people are people and they live and they exist. And I, I loved it. It was so good. Yeah, it's a no mirage in chat says the gays one. Yeah, I do apparently, which is you know, very <laughs> cool. But like you know, there's it's not even it's not even just that that specific community. Like you know, there's a lot of talk about non-binary as well as you know transitioning, and and there's so many different themes in um guild wars 2 in general you're talking about bravo is talking about accessibility we're talking about accessibility in guild wars 2 changing things like the meta was which was very important you know how they changed that dragon's end meta and just cha- making it more accessible to people and also raids like you know they did that as well the emboldened mode another great oh, true. way of making yeah totally forgot about what you're all bringing things from now which i'm just like you know then we had all these major things and then we're like oh well there's still some major things <laughs> like you know emboldened was massive was a massive thing um and everything else that kind of came along with that and then they kind of went down the road with strikes and stuff and we're going to talk about that in a bit as well does anyone want to add anything else on end of dragons wise there was one thing which is that we touched briefly on the awards that end of dragons brought to the game which is phenomenal to see because um i mean guild wars 2 has long been one of those mmos that i think a lot of people have considered to fly beneath the radar whether that's because of marketing Mm. or anything else that kind of goes into it but we have seen not just those awards, but also, you know, uh, a lot of even content creators who maybe never tried the game or, you know, a lot of people who are just saying up front, hey, the game is so good. It actually hears information about it. And uh, with those awards, we saw one that I don't think we had mentioned, but um, the End of Dragon soundtrack was nominated for a Grammy, which is yeah, huge. yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah that's massive. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just thought that was phenomenal Everything. because... A lot of other games, I think, or um, especially ones that are backed by larger, like much bigger powerhouse studios, oftentimes, I think, get put in the spotlight for those regards. Mm-hmm. Um, but Guild Wars 2 is, is really, I think, pushing to also say, hey, no, we've been here. We've been here as well in the spotlight, and we've been doing our own thing and doing a really good job of it, believe it or not. And we're just going to keep growing even more and, you know, working even harder. And so it's so nice to see that recognition. And I think the expansion... Mm-hmm 
really sparked a lot of that at just the right time as more people are looking at a lot of different MMOs and maybe not just those ones that have held the space and dominated the space for so long. People are really looking out now for, okay, but what game really fits me as a player and not mm -hmm. just what's the one that everybody's playing? Um, so I think, I mean, again, not to say... Not to say that it's not like a ton of people are playing Guild Wars 2, but a lot of times just that, you know, I Google search and that's the game that I download or buy is like a big thing. So it's been amazing to see Guild Wars 2 really get to step up in that space and this expansion receive so much attention. Just to mention as well, Daydream and D says in Guild Wars 2 in the chat, Guild Wars 2 also means a lot to people of color as it's rare to see us be represented with any kind of care or respect, especially in fantasy. For sure. And there's been a lot of like controversy about that as well in Lord of the Rings this year and other things where people just aren't accepting of, of so much change, which is only positive and, and good for, you know, the world as a whole, honestly. Um, and having representation is very, very fucking important. <laughs> like, I don't mind swearing and emphasizing that. Um, <laughs> that's okay. But that's what we do on this podcast. We emphasize what's wrong. Um, but yeah. Absolutely great. Awesome. Um, is there anything else, Karen? Did you want to add anything to that for next at all? Or you think Well, I was oh. um, <laughs> la, 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 la. um I was gonna say, um I, I didn't want to interrupt. No, you're um, okay. um so coming off the back of this of, of um the Ice Brood saga, I, I a lot of uh -oh. veteran a lot of veteran players were kind of there was a bit of trepidation in the community, shall we say. Um, that's because, not my opinion. You're very, that's very yeah, polite. Thank yes. you. Yes, very, <laughs> very politic of me. Um, <laughs> and I think that there was there was some kind of speculation were we just going to have the living world going forward, and that was how they were going to continue the story. Were we going to get expansions, and then and and then the expansion was announced. And I feel like the community there was a collective sigh of relief that this game that we've all invested in and that we all love dearly is actually going to have a future because I, th I feel like there was a there was a moment there where it was it was like a teetering on the on the on the brink and that's heartbreaking so i think it's i think as i think i said this um last time i was on i'm i'm hoping that it's that this expansion is that the realm reborn not that it needed to be overhauled like final fantasy 14 when it with its disastrous launch but that it's got new life and it and going forward it's it's going to be one of these quiet successes like a snowball gathering gathering players to it and that that's my hope for the future that that it, everything kind of everything comes up roses for the game because my god does it deserve it in this space all the innovation mm -hmm. all the stuff all the all the all the game ideas and the tactics that have been taken and 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 run with with other games to much success um, is is kind of born in this ha in this hot house of of creativity that is the the arena net, um, and I I have so much love and respect for the developers. I mean, I give them a lot of shit because sometimes their game their story writing leaves much to be desired, but uh, because they don't give us enough time to, to kind of, they have these fantastic stories, but they don't give us enough time to connect with the the characters before they murder them and things like that. Joko, I'm never getting over that, but. Yeah, they they deserve a lot more credit than what they get. So. <laughs> I connected with Joko many times. He Why did they have to kill him? Why did they have to kill him? God damn. Why does that sound like you've written a lot of fan fiction where you just write about yourself and Joko? Oh, I've connected with Joko. <laughs> I mean, me and Joko <laughs> have a lot of things. Like, I mean, I've got an emote. Like that great Joko emote. I've got like, you know, I've got the, I've got t-shirt. I've got I've got a Joko t shirt. If you don't have a Joko t shirt, who are you? Um, <laughs> yeah, Orange is hungry. Yeah, that's true. I I reckon it's coming. You have back. to feed her, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've called I've called Joko Beef Jerky Man for a long time because he looks like a dried piece of beef jerky. <laughs> so I think Orange just needed a little travel snack, pretty much. Yeah, you know? that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So I, I, are you fishing for a Joko, Joko love pillow? By the way, is that is that's that what true. you need? Joko love pillow. What do you mean fishing? I already have one. <laughs> 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 who doesn't i do not no oh, i do not okay. i never care okay. for joko <laughs> you don't like Ooh. deep beef jackie no, <laughs> i actually i think no i think joko is a great villain i think joko is a great villain and uh no He's i mean yeah I, 
I agree with you, Fornax. With everything that you said, it's something where I love your phrase, hot house of creativity, that is ArenaNet, that is Guild Wars 2, because really, truly, it has been. And a lot of the innovations that they've done, a lot of the risks they've taken in the game, it is something that so many other games would not choose to do. And so many other games felt the pressure of WoW's shadow and, mm. you know, having to be something that was just like that, that would appeal to that kind of audience that would format in the same way, because that's what an MMO is. Mm -hmm. But Guild Wars 2 has always been over here like, oh, an MMO can be like, not that. And I really appreciate that. And uh, it's, it is something where that creative process is, it's a constant work that you are, you know, improving on, trying to troubleshoot. And I think sometimes when you don't go with those reliable formulas, um, you do have spend a lot of extra time just kind of experimenting. Mm -hmm. But End of Dragons as an expansion felt like the expansion where for me, it all came together. I mean, we've had these incredible features in other expansions. We've had these incredible moments, stories, narratives, maps, mechanics, all these kinds of things, mounts, all these kinds of things. But End of Dragons felt like the expansion where finally they were like, we have been able to hone in. We've been able to focus on what we want to focus on. We've been able to bring it together and elevate certain aspects. We've been able to really create something that is a balance of the innovations that we've had in the game thus far, and that solidifies that moving forward. And of course, there's always still room to grow, but End of Dragons, I think, was a really fantastic culmination of all their work. Yeah, okay. that's very true. We're going to shift to Yom, because we've got loads to talk about. <laughs> um, Steam as a, as a little report so 10 years of Guild Wars 2 as we know um, we're going to kind of mix this together with Steam actually but like 10 years of Guild Wars 2 and just thinking about what's been achieved in that time what's maybe kind of just been so as an example something that just doesn't even exist anymore in Guild Wars 2 is the esports scene which I was very much a part of for a long time that was a huge thing for a while um, you know, all these other different things that have kind of come along in Guild Wars 2 and then they've kind of gone by the wayside or they've opted to change direction. They've obviously in 10 years completely changed the whole philosophy of what they would do in the game <laughs> by having an expansion, by having raids, by having mounts, by having gliders, by having so many things. Um... You know, it's, it's important to think about these kinds of things as well. And in that 10 years, you know, what's been really, really an impactful change that made Guild Wars to how it is today, I guess. And I don't know, really know if I have any question about this. It's just, you know, thinking generally about the 10 years and also coinciding that, um, sorry, joining that with kind of Steam as well, you know, and having that as being part of that celebration, because that's what that was. It was Steam uh as well for the 10 years. And then, you know, how people can access the game in another way. And sure... The average, the average about players is about 3,000. There's still 3,000 players. Um, that is not the main way that people get access to Guild Wars 2 because it's been around for 10 years. Um, so, you know, it's a small amount of people, but it's, it's, you know, it's not small because it, that's actually quite not bad on Steam. It's not too bad. Uh, it's like about 5 or 6K, and it's averaged out around 3K. I think that number is actually going to grow in the next year. Um, especially as they get more marking and whatnot out about that as well. But yeah, just thinking about the 10 years, kind of steam. What did that mean to Guild Wars 2 this year? Especially, you know, what Peachy said with like Camphor being the 10th year as well. That's pretty big and important thing. Just any comments, really? I don't really have a question. It was a really exciting time in-game with the Steam launch because it felt mm. like when, in the Heart of Thorns days, when the game went free-to-play. And yeah. there was this influx of new players and there was right. a community excitement. That's what Steam launch, at least for me, being a veteran player, that's what it meant to me because mm. I don't play it through Steam. I play it through the launcher as I always have. But but there was that like I was there in game in Queensdale welcoming the new players into the game. And it was bringing back all of those wonderful memories of doing the same thing with people coming to the game pre Heart of Thorns and to play it was just this this really exciting time and because i i want the game to grow i want the game to thrive i want new players and, and new new players coming into the game is how that's going to happen and so that was uh so welcome to see and it was a, a very exciting day very exciting week i just i hope it keeps growing mm -hmm. it was palpable that energy that excitement 
players like welcoming new players into those starting zones. It was so brilliant that they didn't end up having to do something weird where it was like Steam players couldn't play with the other players. I was so grateful for that. Yeah, and it would have been very weird. And sometimes that does happen with like console versus PC and things like that. But with this all being on PC and I mean, even with a lot of those barriers, I think between console versus PC starting to come down, we've even seen like Warframe recently make it so that you can play across the board and mm -hmm. things like that, right? I think those divisions and those separations are becoming less and less and less of a hurdle. Um, so to actually like have everybody be able to come directly into the game and be a part of the world with everybody else was so fantastic. And I mean, oh my gosh, yeah, the amount of people that were just new to the game who were like, oh, hey, I've been waiting for it to come out on Steam. Wait, does this mean this, this? Can I use the Steam controller with it? Can I map all this stuff? And it was so amazing to finally say, you know, yes, you can. You can do it on mm -hmm. Steam. You can play it all. You can get the expansions. You can do all this stuff. You can uh, not have to hassle with like importing it in and doing all this other stuff. And yet, if you were a non-Steam player, there were also still workarounds, right, where you could, you know, import it in as a non-Steam game if you want the controllers or other features. Um, so it didn't feel like it was this huge blockade, and really it just generated so much excitement for the community, so much hype and so much visibility as people go to these major hubs like Steam and they type in MMORPG because they want to play one. Guild Wars 2 shows up there now, and that is something that before you didn't have, you had to go to the web page. The web page was kind of weird. You had to figure out how you had to get yeah. there. It's a little outdated, all the, you know. So to was, actually yeah. just be able to see it there and have this refresh to the information was huge. Um, and I think that really did a lot for the game and will continue to, especially as new releases pop up. Um, the only like growing pains of it, I think so far have to do with Maybe some of the minor confusion that comes from owning different versions of the game, like you can't get the expansions through the, you know, mm. uh, the old launch, like the old version or through the mm. Guild Wars 2 website, you have to get them all through Steam. That's not different than other MMOs. Mm. 14 does the exact same thing where you have to get all the version on one platform. So I don't necessarily think that's a huge problem. Um, and then some of the trading company stuff that goes with that, or even as like partners, right? You know, partner links to support the channel. That's been kind of awkward because you're going like, well, you can, but you can't get it on Steam if you want to support me, if you want it, you know, X, Y, or yeah, Z. Yeah, just don't tell the them same... about Steam, yeah. Yeah, and well, you know, but <laughs> there's some, yeah, money, there's some awkwardness. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like when we're doing when we're doing like gem giveaways and stuff, it's like, but oh, not yeah. for Steam users. So yeah. I think that's really been the only thing that has maybe been a negative of the experience. But even mm. with that, it's something that I feel like with time they're going to sort out, and it's not an issue. So it it mm. hasn't really done anything bad for the game in any way, shape, no. or form. And in fact, I think has truly, truly helped and expanded it to a new audience. Harold and Rava, gonna add. Oh. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to add is that also they, well, I don't, I think they did this on purpose, but I started playing the game in 2015. So it was kind of an awkward, just new LA phase. Like, mm. I think I played one week before the current LA and people were like, oh yeah, Living World Season 1 was so cool, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I understood nothing. I did my personal story and I was like, cool. And then I went straight into Living World Season 2 and I was so confused. I'm like, who are those people? What do they want? Mar like I didn't <laughs> I even realize that Marjorie and Kazmir were like a, a gay couple, you know, because like, yeah, like, like it was not true. as obvious. So it's so cool that they also brought back Living World Season 1 at the same time, around the same time as Steam, because like people get to discover those amazing characters. Like for me, the best moment was when Frostbite uh, just followed Rox and Rox was like, shoo, shoo. And then yeah. she decided to keep him. That was the best thing ever. And I missed out for eight years and I'm so sad about was it. So pool? I'm so glad that- Was that the thingy Sorry? pool? The thingy pool where you, where you like reconnected with them? Or that, was that back in the Living World season one redo? Uh, in season one, when you actually meet like Rox and Frostbite together, like how they meet at the, at the, um, the nursery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, was I couldn't remember, thing. yeah, if it was in the season yeah. one, the thing you mentioned, the, yeah. So it's really cool that new players who will come to the game, do their like level 80 story, kills like then, and then go to, to get to see this. This is really cool because they'll fall in love with the characters in the game much more than I did with mm. the story back then because it felt like I was missing something. Eventually got like the gap has been not, not there anymore. Thank it's goodness. like, you know, yeah, I mean, it's like, think about watching a TV show. 
and like you've you you know if you rewatch an entire thing you can binge it and it's like it's over but you've got like season one to ten and you're missing five like well, yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna continue are it you be there. sorry <laughs> yeah exactly it's <laughs> oh, like what? what do i do now like do i just skip it or like it just it was but that was during a really i'm gonna say that was during a time where if guild wars 2 hadn't have done that they probably wouldn't be here still honestly yeah they'd be here in a very different way because that's when they decided to change things for the for like they started to change things totally because season one was the live content every two weeks and we were like wow that's really awesome but also how the fuck are you gonna do that <laughs> like there's no <laughs> way that you cannot get burnout on in your staff doing that and you would need a studio bigger than blizzard to probably cope with that because no one does that no one puts content yeah. out every two weeks like that. It's not but they've doable. They've always been innovating, and so they tried it. Yes, and it that's the worked good thing. for a little while uh, until they realized it's yeah. too much. But um, sure. it was a very experimental phase, and uh, I'm so glad to have been there for it. Mm. Man, it was a good time for content creation with that regular, oh regular my God. updates, regular. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even know that's, that's, that's how I got started streaming on Twitch was Tuesday Peachy Parties because you would right. play an episode one week, yeah. and the next week they would have like the trailer. Yep. And so you would watch the trailer, mm -hmm. and then the next week you would play the episode, and then the next week you would watch the trailer and then play the episode. So like every yeah. week, like clockwork for a while. It was, it was a good, it was a stressful and very busy time. But because yeah, you did time. your reactions as well. I was like, how yeah. do you have tears left? <laughs> this is like often. <laughs> like you've cried a so lot. Good. It, was, so it good. was. Yeah, yeah. I'm I so remember. glad players get to experience that season now. And 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 in, and in a much more they, they did kind of remix things, they condensed things a little bit and, and uh you know they oh, yeah. um there there was they said they rewrote stuff and you know it, it's it's essentially the same experience, just more more condensed um absolutely and, and in a much yeah. more palatable format and repeatable format oh chef's kiss so happy yes yeah. good and you get to learn about all those festivals like you know because mm -hmm. we do the festivals like the gauntlet and stuff but if you don't know living world season one you're like huh or the fractals i do fractals every day at the highest tier and i never like when we redid living world season one i told my my chat and my friends i'm like why are we in the fractal? But it wasn't, you know, it's just really cool. Like it feels like a whole full circle has finally closed out for me. And it's really awesome that people won't have this gap anymore and they get to experience it straight away. And when they mm -hmm. reach the fractal, they're like, I know it is. I know who Scarlet is, you know? So and sure. I mean, that living season one, it is something that for Steam release, for the expansion, for the culmination of this 10 year story arc, they had to put back in somehow. They had to. Mm. It, it just, like you were saying, Deb, it would otherwise be like, you know, here's 10 seasons of the show we made for you, except we left this one out. Have yeah. fun. <laughs> like, that's exactly what it was. And while you can theoretically always get information about what happened, the actual emotional experience and connection that you have playing that, that lived experience is not actually there unless you are able to watch that season slash play that season. You know, it's mm. just not. So that was a huge thing that I think um, brought all of this together, not just the hype of the expansion, not just the Steam release, but it brought everything full circle for new players and old players in this amazing way um, since we had that release of the expansion. I mean, I can't believe even now that it's done. I still sometimes think, oh my gosh, Living Season 1 is in the game. I played it. I played it. <laughs> I did it. I, oh, yeah. I was able to because I wasn't able to play it for years either. And it still catches me off guard every now and then. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's funny that that um, a lot of us who, who law nerds have been have, were begging ArenaNet to do this forever, and there was a time when we really thought that we were never going to get it back. There were that it was a, quite a while, and I, I mean and it was good for my channel because hey, I made a lot of videos about what the law was and what happened <laughs> and what people missed. But if you're having to go outside the game. To find out why you should care about the people who are your companions with you through the story, that's that's a bit of a fail, unfortunately. And it's not their fault because they did like change tack halfway through 
making the game. Mm-hmm. But I, I look at the Steam launch and I look at the introduction of season one and, and I look at the kind of the, the, the catering to a slightly different audience and I see it all as them thinking about the long game, about the long term um, success of the game and obviously of their business. And I think that they're shoring up their business model, that they're kind of honing it to the people who they think they can market to best, which is casual players who have, um, who, ha- who, who, who they respect the time of, right? A lot of the, the older content was very, very heavy on, on, on hours and hours and hours of grinding different things. Not, and not necessarily that's a bad thing. There's a lot of gameplay and the gameplay is exceptionally enjoyable. But some people just simply don't have that time. And I think that they've streamlined, mm. they've picked their audience, they've finally kind of picked a lane and they're, and they're, and they're honing their product to it. It's interesting because, it- like, as well, you say, sorry, um, right no. on the screen. Um, there is, you say, when we think about 10 years as well, we think about the age of players and how even just the industry has changed because this 10 years has been like a life service has become even more of a thing over with other games because it's normally just been mmorpgs mostly and now it's competitive now it's everything like red dead redemption 2 you know flipping every, anything and everything there's some kind of live uh, service like involved somewhere it feels like nowadays even if it's just dropped for a solo player game on twitch and it's just like what <laughs> i don't understand but okay um and just thinking about how they've done that that's very true i've not really thought about how they've adapted to the industry over the last 10 years I mean, not sometimes not the best i admittedly you know sometimes with the marketing which we all know about um <laughs> but you know in terms of the rest of the game and you know making even just going back and saying you know people do want new but they also want typical mmorpg features like they want that's what they want so they want raids they want mounts they want this stuff but we'll do it our way, right? We'll do it in an innovative way that is new and fresh and where other games have to kind of borrow from it and make it suck. Um, <laughs> worse in their game. But, you know, I mean, it's just that. Um, <laughs> but there's there's so much they have done uh, that has really just been, over the last 10 years, so successful and on Steam as well. And just, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the console as, like, the next thing. I don't, I'm not going to say the, the game World of Warcraft. I mean, um, Steam. What? Okay, anyway, mm-hmm. so, do you guys say mm-hmm. something? Oh, all I was going to say was a follow-up on uh, what Fornax was mentioning, that they've honed it on an audience. I mean, I definitely think there is a, a strong... I mean, in almost every game I play right now, there is a strong acknowledgement of the power of a casual player base. Yeah. Because when you're actually looking at the number of players that play any given content, that style of content and that kind of... Whether it's... It, people lump story under casual content. People lump crafting and gathering oftentimes under casual content. Right. When I say casual, it is not in any way like a ooh, casual, boring It used to stuff. be a like, sli- like a slant. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It used to be a slur. 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 That, yes, that was like yes. an MMO slur, right? right? It's like, oh, you're so casual. <laughs> yeah, people casual. use it. Yeah, yes, it. they use it in this like hostile way. But like, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Why do you think people enjoy playing Stardew Valley? Why do you think people enjoy right. playing any number of games where what you're doing is not, you know, end game, hardcore, super death, try hard. Like there are reasons that we all want to just spend our hours doing something else. So in that regard, I think almost all MMOs have really started to try and buff out those components because they realize that the vast majority of players likely spend the vast majority of their time doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not to say either that I don't think that even with this expansion that we have seen a complete do away of what could be considered endgame in Guild Wars mm-hmm. 2 or what could be considered something like that. And I think that is maybe one of the biggest question marks still hanging here as we look forward mm. to the future. But all of that said, the strike missions for having a kind of divided response from the iceberg saga in terms of difficulty mechanics cheese strats all these kinds of things right like will these actually be something that can be interesting will people actually look forward to doing them i think end of dragons brought that new type of content to the table i think what we've seen since then it has been really good adding these cm some of which are considerably difficult 
and mm -hmm. even having oh, yeah. this final meta that while they did adjust it again they didn't nerf it into the ground so i think we are still seeing that they recognize that there is a wide variation of players and even though they are like rounding out some of those aspects and you know really keeping an eye on maybe that larger player base i do think that this expansion has also been a moment for them to kind of reevaluate what can we feasibly do how can we release mm -hmm. it and how can we still across the board provide a wide range of content from casual to hardcore and of course I think they can even develop that further because there's still so many questions about fractals, about raids, about these other types of content that fall under that. But those aside, I think that End of Dragons really did solidify not just ca casual content, but also gave us a much more cohesive rounding out of content in general from everything with like the world versus world stuff that they've been doing um pvp maybe still also has some you know balance and discussions and bigger things that they you know are working towards but maybe haven't quite jumped as much as other areas but mm -hmm. they've really tried to address a lot of things that i think they've done so very well initially here with the expansion i think they're focusing on the areas that are more important and relevant now like you're right yeah like it's like the pvp didn't encourage the kind of community which really sh shines in guild wars 2 in my opinion um it just doesn't yeah. unfortunately i've been in that community for a long time i know better than anyone i've had the i've had the the good and the bad of it my on my own self you know so it's i think it's a good thing that you know they they move their focus away from i'm glad they're going for world for world over pvp honestly because i think that caters more to the kind of people they want to have in the game um you know and i'm not saying everyone who in pvp is an you know an asshole <laughs> but like you know <laughs> i play pvp i'm not an asshole. Um, but like there's loads of people who aren't it's just that that there's that kind of it's not the the best place in the world to sit in the uh, mists unfortunately but you know it's just a thing um in a lot of games and unfortunately that's not a good enough excuse that it's competitive and it's it's just like that that's not a good excuse everyone just be better um <laughs> general uh piece of information there um i'm gonna i'm gonna unless there's any other kind of points i'm gonna transition because like uh that was a good segue into raids and strikes to think about that uh, which is probably the point um <laughs> so i just ruined it by saying that um I mean, we don't need to talk about it too much. I think Rook kind of covered it a bit, but there is this change between, you know, going from strikes to raids. But I think this is also a good conversation to have about communication as well, um, because that's what it's kind of about for me. Uh, and I think for a lot of people, because their communication has been really good this year. It's been, it's definitely gotten better over the years for sure. And they've even been better in the last couple of years with the change of like Colin and Josh coming back um you know i i wish i'd seen the reaction you had peachy when you saw that colin was coming back because i um... was in i was in a hotel room in georgia all right like reading on my phone and i go <laughs> what i start freaking out looking at my phone with my... Awesome. he's like what what what's wrong i'm like colin's back like uh, yeah i wish that was, <laughs> that so was cool. a blog post and a half that was where they announced the fourth expansion mm -hmm. like I, I i wish i would have been recording yeah it was Sorry that's i think i looked for you to see if you're alive because <laughs> i think we just were going i think it's a I friday had no idea yeah, I, think I had it was a no idea that that blog post was going to be have all these no. bombs yeah, dropped no in it, I, or I would have done something. And like Josh, <laughs> I know Josh as well, and Josh didn't say anything. Like, I don't talk to him every day, but like you know, I know I know Colin <laughs> as well, and neither like they yeah. because they just because Col like Crucible wrapped up, they like, like you know Amazon Games just dumped it, and I was like, mm. damn, like I was commenting for that, we were really involved with that. And then, and because they wanted me to come over to there and do the stuff because of the PvP and Guild Wars too, and then, and then they moved back, and I was just like, "This is the good times now." And I feel like that's a real reason <laughs> this year's bet. been. Oh yeah, this is why this this is. They're, they're two people that I think have really influenced a lot of stuff this year as well in terms of communication, being more open, and also just being like, what was the stuff we wanted to change um when we were here before but there were certain people above us that wouldn't let us do those things um and now we can actually do those things so i think there's a lot more freedom now which i'm very very happy about rookie we're gonna say something 
Oh, I was just gonna do a quick aside before we get back to our real topic <laughs> off of that where Peachy said it was a blog post I never expected that th this oh, all of this many. massive information would be in there and then Jebro going, you know, like, oh, I looked at that and I said, oh, these are the good times now, right? I think that is one thing that with their communication moving forward, we've had an incredible foundation this year and like we were talking about, it's been so much better and we'll talk, I'm sure, more even as we get into specifically the topics of strikes and raids, but one thing that I think is still a big takeaway that they can keep developing for next year and for the next expansion is that you got to take those. These are the things that make me go, oh, my gosh. And these are the good times now. And like actually do them on a live stream. <laughs> You need to do those on a live stream. You need to be like, yeah, I've we have an. Talked about this before, I know, but like, Ugh. you need to have a moment where you're like, if there are these huge things that you know could be a massive pivotal tone changer in your community, yeah. you gotta set All it right, up. All right, so now you want, now yeah. you want like Colin Johansson walking into the doors of Arena Net with entrance <laughs> music. That's what yes. I want. I'm there. Yes. I'm there yes. for yes. it. Absolutely. Can you imagine yes. special announcement walking music? You just see their feet on the on the path or whatever and it's like <laughs> open the door and it's like you know <laughs> tilts up yes. there's colin and josh walking back in i'd fucking love that shit. that's what Slow i mean motion. you need something exactly. like Slow that motion. and then it like dovetails Important. and it's like you know and that's not all and then you get a reveal the trailer <laughs> for like expansion four or whatever right like mm. that's the kind of like next level i think they can keep taking it to because that's where you're gonna really start to see the community like go yeah. absolutely buck wild over it you know so true. so true. so what you're saying is you need we need a live letter with colin i think so month. i think that yeah. like final good. fantasy yes yeah, yeah. i mean like yeah. that but even more so like 14 has the advantage in that they have fan festivals so mm. the way that they disseminate this information and those kind of huge hype moments um oftentimes are done at the fan festivals so, like, we know between each expansion release, immediately, the three major times of the year, roughly, that we are going to be getting the next huge thing for Final Fantasy, like, the next announcement about what's the new race, or what's the new class, or what's the new whatever, right? Um, because they space them out almost always between each of the different, the NA, EU, and JP Fan Fest. So with those, they usually have these whole big presentations and they're on stage and you get the trailers and they have, you know, the live concerts and all these other things that happen. Hmm. So it's part of their broadcast programming that's then disseminated, you know, more large scale or to those who are there live at the event. Um, mm. but it's, it's a little different in that regard because like the live letters they use to disseminate oftentimes like general patch information and hype. Um, but I think the real expansion and like huge things that are game changers for like the next big step of the game, they usually do at these massively hype live event kind of things. So they did that with, I mean, me, me and Peachy were at the Heart of Forms one. That was really solid. That was really good. I wish they would do that. It again. was to, to announce not only the first expansion, but the fact that Guild Wars 2 would have expansions. Like that's, that yeah. was why that one was so. Mm massive and so big and we knew at the at the end of season two there was the heart of thorns logo but we didn't know what that was mm -hmm. we didn't know there was no expansion there was no talk of an expansion just this just these living world releases so there was this community speculation it kept people talking mm -hmm. what is heart of thorns what is this logo what is this of course a lot of people suspected that probably an expansion but there was no confirmation of that and so but it's so people's minds were just i mean we did the pre-show jeb and we had no idea that no. it was an expansion yet we just were speculating on what is it <laughs> and so it was just this unbelievably hyped time and yes that was a, a live event but you don't need those in-person live events in order to like you know for for the 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 multiple levels of marketing mm. and exposure to happen you could do it on a live stream and then you could have, you're going to have a lot more people's reactions to it as people are co-streaming it and reacting to it and then putting videos up on YouTube and social media rather than just putting it in a, at the end of a blog post, something like, you know, fourth expansion. And then you have people tweeting about it. Um, there might be some people who read blog posts, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, on, on their stream. And so you will have their reactions there, but, uh, 
you're going to have more people if it's like in a live stream and in a live environment, especially if, like you said, Jeb, if you kind of make it a spectacle, like mm. Colin walking through the door or something, you know, yeah, if I'm you make it kind of a spectacle <laughs> and we're, <laughs> really and sad. we start to expect that kind of spectacle, like the live letters, you kind of expect mm. a spectacle. So then you're going to have more people tuning in. You're going to have more reaction videos up on YouTube and social media, as well as people who don't engage in all the live stuff. Then you're going to also have your blog post afterwards. And then all of the stuff that the posts and the news articles that come from the blog post. So the more of a live spectacle, even if it's just a live stream mm. that you have, you're going to have multiple layers of marketing and your community spreading the word in different ways, which is going to reach. Definitely agree. Yeah, I think they, they need to, a combination of both what you're, of what you're both saying, really. We need, we need that. I think shift it bit into 2022. I think a lot of places need to honestly do that. There's like websites are cool, like to have all their information, but like, you know, TikTok and social media and all this kind of thing is a thing like let's, let's use that a little bit more and <laughs> maybe videos and Twitch, you know, to really get that kind of going. Uh, that would be awesome. I'm going to kind of shifty us a little bit on this rather than crying. Uh, sorry, Phonix, you have anything to add that you would like to add that you have? No, more marketing, please, for fuck's sake, what? more marketing. <laughs> it's, the only, the it's the only thing like now where I'm like one of the things where we're just where I'm just like that feels like a solid area that just is always needed to look at. But like, you know, guilt when they had, although it was very good at like half fonts launch, that was really, really, it was pretty damn good. They got us all out there playing the, you know, the classes and stuff before release. We could cover a lot of the game. We, well, a lot of the classes and different things that were coming out, you know, they did the betas, which were good and new, new little kind of area and story and stuff. And it was just, you know, the they had actual advertising in the game. Yeah. Like rather than Path of Fire, which just felt like a living world release. And it was it was just so it was the stark it was just such a stark contrast between Path of Fire and Heart of Horns. And you know, I mean Heart of Horns at the first pack south ever. I know rip pack south. But like, you know, because it's not around anymore, everyone, sorry. Um yeah, that was a pretty big damn big thing. You had people there like um which is like Angry Joe, like in the audience and like all these massive creators who just like liked Guild Wars 2 and wanted to see what was going on. It was so much hype. Um, mm -hmm. And there was, there was close, wasn't there like close to 100,000 people watching in different places or something stupid like that? Mm -hmm. It was just like front yeah. page of Twitch probably as well. And it was like, it was ridiculous. Mass. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's just, uh, I know it kind of detoured us for a second, but that's one thing that I think um, with the precedent that we've already set this year, which has been fantastic with that increased communication and, you know, dedicated efforts to it. That's that next step that as we continue on into next year and as we know another expansion is on the horizon, that I am like, yes, yes, yes. Like, let's bring this all the way into like putting this game front and center because you can do this. They have an amazing team and the mm -hmm. game deserves to be seen. And yeah, I think with that extra bit of spectacle as you're talking about, it is, it is advertising in and of itself that like you do the whole thing, but it just like reaps additional rewards so far beyond that with that extra level, because like you're saying, we're in a content driven society at this point in a lot of ways yeah. all of our social media all of our feeds all that kind of stuff having your moment your spectacle echo in that echo chamber for as long as possible to reach as many people as you can um is something that i think is more and more a, a huge way that you even motivate new players to try out games like these so that's my like all right this has been great this is amazing let's evolve that for next for next year for next expansion let's keep working on it and building on it um which i think does bring us jebra here i'll swing it back you ready this is another transition that i'm about to do because i know you get really excited about these so i do when other people when <laughs> other people do it and i don't i get very excited this is this is Just, my excitement time of the week everyone. okay Get ready. Um, so let's talk then about other aspects we want them to maybe keep developing, building on. Let's go back around to strikes and raids. What are we thinking for the future of these and uh, what they've done this year with strikes in that kind of content? All raids. Sorry. <laughs> like, 
um uh -oh, start first but yeah I, it would raids are so good in guild wars 3 like it's not just like you go in you beat something you get out like there's just like the whole story this this whole environment universe with like really good voice acting and mm. so it's not just about like the rewards and the stuff like and i really miss this and they kind of like I, I was one of the people who really disliked um, the strikes, um, the IBS strikes. But then, so when the... Um, was that because you felt that they were going to replace raids, though? Or do you think... It, uh, what do you think so several that? things. I found them quite, like, unchallenging and a little mm, bit boring and very mm -hmm. similar. Like, it felt like you enter this arena, you get out of this arena, it's go into the done, same right? arena, and it's the same thing. Like, there's not, a, like, story or lore or anything. It doesn't feel very special. Mm. Uh, but then you kind of find that uh, in End of Dragons where you have different environments. There's, like, really good voice acting. Like, Enka's amazing in that strike. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it is closer, but it's very, again, short. Like, you don't go through the progression of beating, like, two, three to four bosses, like, and stuff. So... We're getting closer, but they've always been so good at raids and they've left so many doors open. Like, for example, Hall of Chains at the end with that, like, Desmina, like, cutscene where you're like, uh -huh, now that we've been doomed, I'm going to be queen of the underworld and stuff. So we never get to see the end of that. And it's mm. very sad because raids have just been amazing content, not just like, I know there's a lot of elitism and stuff around it, but yeah. If you avoid that part, raids are great, and they're also a really great way to connect with your people and like help them get into raids and show them that raids is not that scary or not that toxic. You know, you've got to find your people. Know. It's one of those finding your people thing, and and I and I think honestly that's the problem because there's so yeah. many different things which feed into raids in Guild Wars Two. There's no LFG, which you know in in World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy fourteen it's a lot easier to get into raids, right? And it's a lot easier to yeah. get into these areas where the strike is a very quick thing and you can kind of jump into it and not spend too much time, unfortunately. And yeah. I think with, and I'm going to kind of compare it to PvP in a way, there's that kind of elitism kind of toxicity, which I think they do try to avoid. And I think in a way, strikes is kind of a way of doing that for sure. It helps to avoid that to a degree and i'm not saying everyone that does raids and strikes is toxic again you know not at all um it's mm -hmm. just part of that mmorpg thing that we love you know raids has always been a thing in mmorpgs like the big ones that we kind of you know we compare from wow and onwards i know there was mmorpgs before but you know it's the classic thing in an mmorpg it's good but there is that feeling that raids are kind of and it, this goes back to communication for me specifically. I'm rather absolutely like validate everything you say. Like it's such a good experience. The story is great. The fights are really cool. The emboldened mode is great. And raids are still very, very relevant for like having legendary armor in a PVE environment. So good. Um, mm -hmm. and, in, and it is important. I actually think if there is going to be a chance that raids come back, if it doesn't happen next year, it's done. Because like... Josh and Colin are back and they're bringing things back that I think people are unex didn't think they would kind of develop further. Things like, you know, World v. World restructuring, they continued that because they see that World v. World has got the potential to do it. I think they will listen to the community. I actually think they're going to bring GVG in at some point as well um, to take over kind of from what PvP was maybe if they can get restructuring sorted. And, you know, they would do maybe raids as well. But, like, they've had so much... They've probably had much more success with strikes because of, if you think about the world first that we had with, like, two guilds, maybe, or how many guilds took part, and it got all of that, you know, and marking... Well, all of that kind of attention from the world... Like, the World of Warcraft peeps, the Final, Final Fantasy fourteen peeps. And that's what drew all of that hardcore crowd over. You had like people with millions and millions of subscribers, like making videos on Guild Wars 2 and right and uh, the strike and stuff. And it was like, that was the thing that pulled people over. It wasn't really the raiding, unfortunately. So I think in a way that kind of sucks for people who want raids because it kind of wants yeah. to sell strikes more. But also it does say that, you know what, we can make these engaging fights and encounters. So why can we not maybe 
put that just slot them into a raid and just don't have so much stuff in between so i don't know i like i like I, the raids i wouldn't like to see them back but there's so much to I think, think about i think the big difference between between that right is not that raids can't be that exact same kind of draw yeah. it's that in the past raids have been perhaps a little bit more amorphous in the sense that almost the Icebird Saga strikes were amorphous at start, right? Um, sometimes you have a a wing of a raid that releases where the first boss is really on par with like a strike, a normal mode strike boss. Sometimes you have wings that get much more difficult, right? Or that have that level of challenge. Sometimes CMs drastically affect a fight and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing that we saw with that hype over Harvest Temple specifically was that there was a little bit of lead up where they were saying, hey, this is going to be the hardest thing that we've probably put in the game. And then you had these communities come in and they were going, this is incredibly hard. And as that kept disseminating, more and more people were like, oh, hey, all right, well, let's check this out. How long has it been? You know, these kinds of things like that's where I think you get that tension. And that's not to say that I think that moving forward, they should, if they decide to put raids back in, they should make them all as hard as Harvest Temple CM. <laughs> like, it's not that. But I think that viewership that we saw was not specifically because of the strike. I think, like, as in, it's a strike mission versus a raid, and that has more viewership and traction. I think it's just because of the level of difficulty that that strike demonstrated. And like you mentioned when you were talking, the fact that it shows that they can design fights like this. It shows that there can be a level of high skill ceiling and challenge in the game. Um, and with that, I mean, I think... What is the difference between a strike and a raid? A raid is just multiples of those connected by story and mm -hmm. trash. You know, I mean, trash mobs are small encounters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> not wrong. Sorry. Sorry. The game trash. is trash. trash. <laughs> the game is trash. And then there's a good thing. And then the game is trash. <laughs> Honestly, you Rick, you are just blasting the game today. <laughs> you heard it here. Raids are trash. So we don't need them. I don't want them back in the future. Right. No, I'm kidding. Um, one of the things that I actually <laughs> think Guild Wars 2 has always done incredibly well about the raids, and one of the reasons that I would still like to personally see raids continue, <laughs> is because of the fact that those trash mobs or trash encounters in many mm. other games um, are actually, I think, a step above in Guild Wars 2. There's some very interesting little mini mechanics, mini bosses, mini encounters, mini... And I think all of those are so delightfully fun, because not every challenge in Guild Wars 2 has to just be a sheer technical skill challenge push buttons mm -hmm. make big numbers do things like you have these unique mobilities you have these unique abilities you have you know all kinds of situational stuff that you can spec in anytime you're out of combat and so to me i think that's part of the brilliant basis of possible innovation in this game that other games don't have you can design these bizarre puzzles for players to have to figure out with like what classes do we have mm. do you have a thing will it make you go fast can you teleport what if we have this okay we'll do multiple portals in different areas and you're gonna have to close them and you're gonna have to like those sorts of things i think are brilliant um so all of that to say the strike mission foundation in end of dragons i think phenomenally refined that formula of content for the game um i really do think the variety just like rava you were saying i think the variety the storytelling the fact that many of them are connected to the narrative itself also makes them feel like a, a distinctive moment supported by story without having to necessarily be in a whole raid wing mm -hmm. um and you don't have to have everything like that you can have little side stories side bosses things like that and that's fine too but i think they've been great the the tuning the distinctive bosses the arenas it's all felt varied the mechanics have been creative even the one that we got um with living season one mm -hmm. i think was fantastic and that lion's arch instance builds your language and understanding how to to tackle the three bosses the cm adds a nice little challenge it's mm -hmm. a great introduction for first time experiences with strikes if players are playing through the linear narrative um so all of that is phenomenal and i really hope that with the success of things like harvest temple and other things um that we maybe do see i'm happy with strikes and i'm happy if they stay like that but i do think that next step is something more having that additional level of other content whether that is that fractals become that and we get a normal and what would be considered an end game version like a hard version of those they have their own scale and all sorts of other stuff mm -hmm. or it's something like a full raid wing 
I do think we need more instanced PvE content in this game, um, and I hope they don't do away with raids, but I think uh, End of Dragons brought some really great new types of content to the table um, mm. that I think they've refined well. I just want them to be building blocks for more raids, personally, like, so that we also get additional ones. But that's, I mean, that's just me, and um, I think what we have is great right now, but... I just, I just want the end of this Mina. I want to know what happened. <laughs> she, um, I know that story. I can tell you later. Yeah, but as a raid, can you make a raid, please, Jim? Can I do like, it? Like, just uh... go, yeah, go work for Anet and make raids. But if you come to CL, <laughs> you can, you can raid for it right now. There's ice skating and, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, right, I'm, I'm aware that we're going to be running out of time for a Q&A because um, we've probably got maybe a half an hour or so, maybe a little bit more, depending depending on how much of a roll we're on. Um, Living World Season 1, we kind of did talk about... The one thing I want to talk about and mention in there is, you know, we talked about... I think people mentioned it from time to time, so I don't think we need to have a massive conversation about it because otherwise we will go down the rabbit hole. Um, this is my fault. I should have picked less subjects. Um, <laughs> should have just done a full-on Q&A episode. That would have been better. But I wanted to do this. I said I would do like a review of Guild Wars 2. It's just maybe always remembering that we talk for hours upon for one thing and that I don't need to shove a bunch of stuff in. But thinking about um, the Lion's Arch coming back because that was a massive thing for a lot of people like just being able to go back fight that that was still one of my my, my favorite events like battle for lion's arch and escaping it at lion's arch as well like that whole sequence was so huge i love i love that so much and it was some of the first youtube content i did was playing through it um after i started shoutcasting because I, I really loved the gameplay and everything in the game it wasn't just pvp um and then realizing that you can get these achievements, which I haven't done yet, but I just access someone else's Lion's Arch instance. Um, but, you know, going back and just being like, I can go to the older Lion's Arch and I can see all the things pretty much that I remember. And uh, there might be a few things, bits and bobs not there, but you can go back to the Lion's Arch and uh, get the little song, you know, <laughs> from, uh, you know, by Ogden's Hand was Saving and all whatever, you know, like I remember watching that music video many, many times over and over again. And it was just a nice experience to go back and also have other people go back that have never really seen it. They've seen it in the story, but like in that se sepia tone kind of like, you know, this was the old days are true. Um, <laughs> like now it's, yeah, I don't know. It was, uh, they can see it and they can see how much better it was than the concrete hell that we have now. Design. Concrete like, jungle, yeah. Yeah. Concrete jungle. I did concrete have somebody Disney. say this. Did we talk about this on the podcast or was this on my stream? I never oh, know. Right. It all starts to blur together. Somebody did mention the fact that canonically, I guess, Old Lion's Arch was partially, was or largely, sorry, the con reconstruction into New Lion's Arch was largely made possible because of the consortium. So the fact that it looks like SeaWorld is actually brilliant because of the corporate hand <laughs> that was had in rebuilding the city. And ever since then, I feel like lore-wise, my soul, the, it's been a balm to my soul where I'm like, oh, I actually think that's delightful. But having had the opportunity to actually go back and see bits of the city... Old Lion's Arch was real good. Fam, you were right. I thought you were all over exaggerating for a long time, but it's actually really good. It has so much charm and I really love it. So I'm glad we got it back. And so, I, yeah. I think, you know, it makes sense why they designed the new hub the way they did. But it was interesting. I, I'm that really happy to it see it. It fitted in as well with 10 years because it was like, again, it was like another 10 year thing because we've not had Lion's Arch, the old Lion's Arch. You know, it got just, it got wrecked pretty quick. We didn't really have it that long. But everyone remembers it so warmly, you know, um, and so, so I, I just remember everything about that place, like every single nook and cranny, like it's just, you know, the sewer systems, the random jump puzzles, the thing where you had to jump backwards because you can't jump forwards to do that part of the jump puzzle where you go down the sewer bit, not down, down the pole. And it's like, well, you can do it any other way. There was just so many random little bits and bobs in there um it was just a cool place to be and i've got one character who's just in there and i'll just log in for my daily and be like oh this place is cool Aww. so nice so nice love it i remember doing a tour before it, before it got completely wrecked so i was like just went round it and was just like this is this and this is where i did this and this is where i guild met for all these things no 
<laughs> Good times. Okay. I've got to work on those achievements, yeah, packs exactly to get it for myself because like time, um, it's, there's a lot to do. <laughs> I just don't have yeah. the time to do it. It now. takes a while. Like I've still, yeah. I still haven't seen um, old Lions Arch, and I'm working with Scaled in the chat on it, uh, oh, on God. it. So I should get it this Tuesday. I can't wait to see it. Mm, cool. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm going to come watch that stream. Make sure you do it, peeps. Okay. Well, we're well, restructuring kind of talks about it a bit as well. I'm going to kind of skirt over this a little bit, but you know, just and did anyone want to talk about lines? Oh, lines actually, no, like Peachy was the Fornax as well. Did you have anything you wanted to add, like just about generally, like maybe season one that we didn't talk about? I'm just glad it's back. Yeah, so glad. Yeah. Both both for us veterans who it's just pure nostalgia, mm -hmm. and for new players who never got to experience it. Just thank you, thank you for bringing it back. Yeah, for sure. I okay. did want to say something about raids when we, when you guys were talking about her. Sure. That very 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 briefly that oh, no, I okay. think that this is one of the few areas in the game where I think that their innovation has not worked. Um, I think that I want they do raids so well. Mm -hmm. I want to see them in the game. I think if they don't, it will be a failing. I think it's. I think it's, we were talking earlier about how catering to casual players is a very good thing and it broadens your player base, but you mm -hmm. have to have a broad mix. So you have to have content for casual players, dirty casuals like me, I wear that title with pride, but you also <laughs> need to have the hardcore players. You have to give them a carrot. And this is where games like Guild Wars, uh, where Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft excel mm -hmm. because they have a noddy raid that anybody can do as long as you can press forward and not stand in the fire. That's great. And yeah, it looks exactly the same. you just like half of the MMO <laughs> community <laughs> with the standing in fire comment, unfortunately, I guess so, yeah. True, true. Yeah, I play a healer most of the time, exactly, so I do yeah, feel I that, that in my soul. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think we all um, know that. But, <laughs> I think we all also, play healers at some point or whatever, yeah. We're, we're sure. all Care Bears here. Yes, we are. Um, oh, wait, no, but, Aurora Peachy just, is just Dragon Hunter. Aren't you? Dragon, oh, oh, are you Dragon? Yeah. Are you playing yeah. Dragon Hunter? Actually, both oh. of you play Dragon Hunter oh, as well. Dragon Hunter, yeah. loud and proud. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 And Druid. Yeah, there's Druid as well, well as other things. Yeah, that's true. I, oh, I am a I am a care bear. So so you need that <laughs> noddy content for people who 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 just want to go in and look at the the shiny boss and get a bit of gear. You need that, and then you need the the more challenging group content for guilds who want to form and have friendship groups and have Friday night drunken raid. That's what they want to do, right? That's that's the thing, and you need that bleeding hair on fire, balls to the wall. First Rubbing time you said it today, well it. done. It took you Thank like you. two hours, so you're doing, doing, you're doing very well. I would like to dovetail a suggestion off this super fast, which is that if and when we get an announcement <laughs> about raids, I would like the official live stream or mega hype announcement, which obviously will happen because we've talked about how they could keep doing that. But I just <laughs> want it to be, we need, <laughs> did you just say? Balls to the wall. Balls, Balls to, the, to wall. the wall, hair on fire. <laughs> I just want like, I want to see Ruby or something just like, and coming in 2024, we have, Balls to the wall, <laughs> on fire, raid content coming for you. Brought to you by Marjorie. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, okay. So jokes aside, I think it, the game really needs Joke. it. Joke. What? What? I'm not being really deadly do. serious about this. Because you get you get the people in. You get that if it's very hard content, like you were saying before, you get the people in. They want to see it. The they, people don't believe it's a myth that that Guild Wars could possibly be difficult, mm -hmm. showing that they've never fucking played the game, obviously. And then you 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 get that interest, and then you then you get guilds like Method coming in. They want to try it. They want to see if they can beat this content in this twinky little game that's all sweet and like rainbows. And then they get their ass handed to them for a week, right? Don't call you us out for a twinky little game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. I love it, right? But uh, but what the game actually really really needs, and I know that people in the chat are gonna like turn against me and burn me at the stake. We need a proper auto matching system. We've talked about that before. It's okay. We, we have. We, we do. We, we, we're on the same team with this. We're on the same yeah, team mm -hmm. with this. And chat Great. is as well. They ain't got choice. 
You just <laughs> you have a drop down. You say, I want to be a tanky person. I want to be a supporty person. I want to be a burn people's faces off pe person. And then you go in, you click that. That's your role. You play it. And it's not the holy so trinity. So many violent I options. <laughs> <laughs> like burn people in the face option. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not sure that's, that's going that, I think in with that's Guild Wars 2's, like, you know, <laughs> vibe, but, like, you know, we support so many communities as well as people that like to burn people's faces, apparently. So there is the oh arsonist in you that you would like to join, and Guild Wars 2, you'll fit right in. Red <laughs> roll. Red roll. Defenestration, please. Yeah. Yes. No, yes. that's that. Oh, gosh. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah, that was really well said, Hornex. Thank you. Or the but burning that, face bit? Oh, no, on the rest of it. <laughs> No, yes, that's what I, th I think i think we need that i think for to, for the for the health of the game they need care bear content they need store good story content but they need that aspirational mm. get the get the neck beards involved get the the twitch heads who want to see a really interesting raid involved i think that and, yes. and that and then you've got a big broad neck church beards. to keep the game going for years that's what i think jesus christ <laughs> the neck beard why you have asked me to come and do this on a weekly basis i do not know i do not understand. i need the joy of of your your voice and, and humor that's why yeah um, i would not trade this and input. i would not no absolutely i wouldn't trade not. this for the world um anyone else want to talk about the i don't know what we we're talking about very general <laughs> things about it because i think i want to do some q a um unless anyone wants to kind of mention anything that felt was important um i mean we briefly talked about world versus world restructuring right i, think we did. I mean yeah. i think a lot of people were maybe hoping that we'd have the final version out this year um it seems like there have been a couple little hurdles that maybe have made it take a little bit longer but at the exact same time it's been great it's been super fun it's great mm -hmm. to them actually really being able to address this after a long time and i think that we're getting to a point where it's working it's working smooth i've mm -hmm. had a blast i've had some of the most fun ever actually just trying and getting into world versus world when i've been able to go in for them even though i haven't been able to do all of the betas so i am like ready to have this be a thing 24 7 so that we can just play together and any time that i'm on stream and somebody's like hey you want to do world versus world and i'm like yeah we could just do it you know and um we could do that easily with anybody who's around so uh i mean obviously you you know queue in for your group and whatever things but um the flexibility of being able to do that is so great and i think they've implemented it in a really nice way so and it's amazing how many betas they've done like it's so extraordinary because they're really going to fine-tune it to the perfect thing like you said rook like in science i don't think I've, I've done many experiments that i had to redo to make sure it worked correctly and i'm pretty sure that the World v. World betas have been more numerous than my science experiments uh, as of late, so... <laughs> okay. Legends. I'm gonna pick yeah. a few... If, if, Ooh, if, cool. if you don't like PvP, if you're scared of PvP, play World v. World, because it's a nice mix yeah. of, of PvE and play, player versus player. PvD, and yes. You get, PvD. Yes, you, you, you get to <laughs> storm massive castles, run around in big groups, and if you if you're with a good group of people on on Discord or on 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 Ventry or whatever the hell, mumble mumble Teamspeak. it's mumble now. There you don't go. Know. Okay. Team speak. Uh, yes. Yes. Boom, yes. Boomer gamer here. Um, Skype. Then... Skype as well. Yeah. Skype's a good one. Yeah. 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 WhatsApp. Whatever your group AOL is. Messenger. Yeah. 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 I'm just <laughs> get in everything. with a with a good group <laughs> with the banter. It's 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 real good fun. And I I do highly recommend if you're in on EU. Uh, Blob is my World v. World Guild. Um, I love them dearly. They're all batshit crazy. They make me look incredibly tame. I'm like the boring <laughs> one. So yeah, yeah. it's good. Okay. I did just think of one last thing that we haven't touched on for things that happened for Guild Wars 2 this year for the first time. Oh, that would be many things. <laughs> we sorry. Well, I was going to say Twitch drops. Twitch oh, yeah, drops that was happened. kind of big, yeah. Oh, that was, kind of that big. was big. I thought that was big. I thought that yeah. I could see that it drove a lot more viewership to Twitch. It had mm -hmm. like a much like a noticeable uptick in the directory while they mm -hmm. were active. And I'm looking forward to hopefully maybe 2023 we get to see more a variety, better even better drops, uh, or mm -hmm. like longer campaigns, or um because it seemed like, at least from my perspective, that it went really well for people. Yeah, they get I I have some very interesting thoughts about drops that are positive and negative <laughs> um they, they really do drive people to the directory for that period of time there it's they don't 
there's not many there's not much stay power unfortunately i think it's just been like a, a problem with drops i think the intention is or the idea is on the hope is that people stick around you know the directory just drops right back off when it when they leave there is there is a, some people hopefully that stick around in communities i hope um but they what they need to do is make just give people better rewards from drops <laughs> honestly the rewards are a little bit they're a little bit potato um but i think you know they don't have to always have to be great they're just a free thing right then people just want to come along but they're they're not great but look, i think honestly it's a overall drops are a good thing i agree with you they are a very very good thing for sure um i think putting them up when there's big content is going to be what they should be doing like living world story boom big world v world restructuring event get some world v world items in there do that yeah absolutely they just need to pick the time it's part of that marketing strategy really so that's that's a big part of it so that was actually a really big thing and also prime gaming as well like on mixing in with that there's the prime gaming stuff as well so you can get the mounts you can get not mounts um like some of the pet skins there were some good bits and bobs but then there was kind of some just random <laughs> things like experience boosters and stuff and you're like yeah you're trying to promote the the new player as well and that's how you kind of get people in so i get it um yeah i have a lot of bad feelings about drops uh there's a lot of negativity that comes in from other communities about you know the competition over the viewership and everything else like that and it can get very it can get a bit hairy and i know i'm not the one to talk about here so we'll move on to the next subject <laughs> that was a good segue anyway q a um i'm there's there's a lot of questions on there i just want to kind of i'm going to kind of ask a couple um a couple of fun ones i'm trying to go for the ones which are really really long-winded that i know we're just gonna be able to get into um i like this one from eternal mirage in who is in twitch chat and said is there an armor or weapon skin that you've been obsessed with recently um and i can start this off there's actually um there was a the hood I can't remember what it's called, but it was the there's a hood that kind of makes you look a little bit like um I can't remember who the the Marvel hero is, Doctor Doom. And he it's got a hood and like kind of a robot face and it's got this kind of um glow in it as well. And it's it's on the training it's on the gem store, sorry. <laughs> like most of them probably are. Um but I wear that on most of my characters now. And it just makes you look like this kind of dark hooded character with a which is a little bit more futuristic and kind of fits with my engineer pretty well. So that's the one I've kind of been enjoying recently. Is there anything is it Miss Stranger? I don't think it's Miss Stranger, but it it's got that feeling around it. But the Miss Stranger is the whole outfit, I believe, yeah. Anyone else? And what 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 kind of what's been your kind of go to like kind of a skin or one that you've used for a long time? I mean, Aurora Peachy. Surely, when the princess weapons came in, you were like, "Boom, I'm oh, there." Oh, I got my I got all the magical girl. <laughs> magical weapons. girl fun ones. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> were, the, were they? What were they called? Absolutely. Were they called like prince? What did they actually call them? No, they're oh. Is it the princess? Are they call them princess? something like sailor moon yeah yeah that yeah, style but like <laughs> magical set what do they call princess I don't know. One, of, one of our um uh when we were designing our last subscriber badge for my channel we mm. took inspiration from those nice those, that weapon set like kind of like the, the oh. gold like outline and oh, stuff yeah. like yeah it was a mix of stuff but that that was a huge influence for it so very much like that weapon set awesome what but what about you personally what is your is was that is that one of the like kind of go-to things that you always kind of wear or like recently on your character or is there anything you kind of like to go for i know you like the legendary armor as well that's one of your one of the ones you kind of wear i think sometimes Peaches isn't going to answer the question. Was that me? Oh, I, thought you had, I was just I continuing you with you. I just felt bad that you. I that I kind of just assumed you liked those weapons, and They're that was it. Well, I didn't you want... assumed correctly. You assumed correctly. Oh, so okay. I, wasn't gonna, I was like, that's <laughs> it. it. No, yeah, yeah. I was like... <laughs> well, I do. I do love my legendary armor mostly because it reminds me that I actually used to raid uh, regularly. You know. And, yeah, we and used to raid raided. together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and those were such good times. And yeah, every indeed. time I see my character in my legendary armor reminds me of those good times actually so, did that yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's one awesome. skin that um uh, uh okay so it's gonna sound a little bit of uh, a bit bad but 
I since Armory came out, which for me was an amazing thing. Oh, the Armory. I yeah. have decided. Yeah, it was Wait, incredible. Was that this year as well? No, I think it was last year. I think I it was know. last year. I think so. Uh, but since it came out, I kind of like started. So I had like four sets of legendary armor mm. from raiding because of like you couldn't share the armor. So once this came out, uh, um. Aned sent me six chests uh, to replace those six pieces of extra legendary armor I had. Mm. And with them, I used to get those legendary sigils. So then I kind of got really addicted in having every legendary weapons because I had the armory and all the sigils. Like I even have an underwater sigil. I even have like runes and stuff. But I don't have the mm, underwater it's... legendary spear gun. So I'm obsessed with it. You can it. probably buy that for pretty cheap. I used to do a podcast <laughs> with someone. Um, I used to do a podcast for like some really big gaming website ages ago and there was like a really big like journalist on there and there was someone else and she i can't remember her name now but she used to write for um i think mmrpg.com but the first ever legendary she went for was the shark and spear thing like and this was in like cool. year two it does look cool yeah. but like out of any legendary like she just got blasted for the game for this one thing <laughs> oh, yeah. and i was like oh you always came out to this story of how like she just went for this just because she got the precursor and was like i have to make it it's fate i was like <laughs> thing looks cool but you don't spend too much time underwater unfortunately i mean i guess you do in core game but like maybe in the future yeah so yeah cool. I'm I, I could buy it but I think like my community would bash me for it so I'm um, just you know not buying it so you're and just, just talking... missing that one left <laughs> right yeah. okay okay Harold and uh Rook, which kind of skin are you floating towards it can be a weapon it can be like a, it can be an outfit as well if you want I mean I'm, su I'm surprised that Rook's even having to think about this right now honestly because I already know the answer uh, arena tire yeah of course <laughs> i'm not surprised <laughs> yeah easy <laughs> i mean it i didn't even feel like i was just like yeah there's no reason for me to talk about it you all know you heard me talk about these weapons <laughs> for 20 <laughs> episodes or more mm -hmm. i i mean i won't lie i have loved all the canthan stuff that they have put out mm. uh all the outfits all of the mount skins the black lion weapons like those crane weapons oh my gosh the design on those is just absolutely stunning mm. um i like the ones that have the little fox fire effect too i think they're really cool yes um, they're very i've been good. just yeah. so into that i've just been so into it i made characters just to put them in the outfits that i was getting <laughs> like yeah of course so I've been I've been really into those, but um, I mean, yeah, I can't make myself change my main Norn out of my Orene glittering outfit and the Orene infusion, the sparkle rainbow time, and the Orene legendary. Now that I've gotten it, I keep thinking like, oh, maybe I'll change my look. And no, I won't. I won't do it. So I just stay in that outfit yeah. with my glittering Orene wings on um, because it fills me with an indescribable joy to be the rainbow and just yeah. like. <laughs> run around and channel my favorite best beautiful dragon girl i just love her so much um so yeah i mean that's been it but i have made characters to do a lot of the like canthan themed skins i know that they kind of they leaned more to the korean inspiration mm -hmm. with canthan which i really love for dragon or for dragon age 2 oh my gosh i've been playing too much dragon age recently um okay. for guild wars good, for eh? guild wars 2 but i i want this in final fantasy 14 as well I just want a game to give me a good, beautiful kimono. That's it. I just want a good, beautiful kimono. Not like, not anything that's totally, I don't know, that's like a, a mini skirt version or like, mm -hmm. I just want mm -hmm. a kimono <laughs> because I, <laughs> I got very into, um, in the last year because of some amazing resources here in the city mm -hmm. of Chicago, we have a phenomenal Japanese culture center. And I started getting into uh, uh, the art of dressing, Kitsuke, uh, the art of dressing in kimono. And I've learned so much. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful, uh, like, tradition and style. And the the craftsmanship that goes into it is so phenomenal. And I, there's not a single game yet where I just have just a beautiful mm -hmm. kimono and not, like, you know, a million other things that have been done to it. So I kept hoping with Kanto we might get that. But we haven't yet. But maybe sometime. Well, no, you put it in, you put it out there. So now, right. now they have, no, you need to put the energy out there. 
for someone to pick I, I, I collect I collect uh, I've, I've collected a couple of antique kimonos mm. they're beautiful and they've they're, they're like silk and they've got s proper hand painted silk kimono they're, they're wow. stunning yeah. It's beautiful. Really? It's so oh beautiful. God. If you've never watched um, like a documentary of a lot of the hand painting techniques, oh, it's so gorgeous. Have you ever tried wearing any of the ones that you have? Um, so the the ones that I have, uh, they were uh, they were salvaged kimonos, so that mm. they're, they're, they're they've been made into a shorter shorter yeah. version. So it's like it's like a little um, my very very glamorous house coat, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. That's fair. They're so yeah. beautiful. And so yeah. many of them at this point, um, like you can get them for really cheap, honestly, because uh, yeah, they um, a lot of them are antique or vintage. Um, but because, you know, as fashions change and things like that, or they're only used oftentimes for like special occasions or very specific mm. occasions in Japan now, um, you can find the most gorgeous pieces that, yeah, like uh, that aren't really they're just going to get turned into pillowcases unless you get mm. one. I mean, it's so gorgeous. But yeah, that's just my little wish. But I've loved all the Canton stuff that they've made. And I'm set with all my Orin gear. Um, so that's been my yeah. my joy lately. Graham, you the last I think, one. I think my favorite. So when I, I like the old school stuff. So I mean, mm. like the first legendary weapon I made was uh, the Bifrost. And yeah. then I made Kudzu because, you know. Why wouldn't you? Uh, and um, I can tell you many reasons why. But... I, I think they're, they're... <laughs> that's not this Silence podcast. Silence you. Um, no, but um, I uh, there are so many like underrated stunning weapons and, mm. and, and underrated like incredibly beautifully detailed gear. Yeah, we're really kind of spoiled for choice. I I love the gearing system. Actually, the collection system for gear in Guild Wars 2 is the best in any game. Yeah. And 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 the, the you and if you if you're like a hoarder or you love completionist stuff, it's fantastic. You can collect every skin in the game and then you can go and look at them. You can open your bank, you can see all the different skins. You don't have to like jump out of the game. You can preview everything. You can see it. You can um, a lot of the time you can figure out where the hell it's from as well when when you're in there. And I, I just love it. And and like for example, Maj is it Majolnia, which is the this the the, the the like lightning hammer that you can craft. Mjolnir. That's one of the element. Yeah, that's one of the yes. elementalist weapons that you can summon. I, I have that. that. Cool. It's yeah, so beautiful. So it deserves cool. to be a legendary, right? It's such a stunning weapon. So I mean, it's if you're asking me to like pick mm. favorite things, it's like which one of your children do you like best? Now I do have a favorite one, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, kids. <laughs> if you're watching the uh, podcast. There is a Mommy favorite. Mommy loves you both. You, yes. uh, you just don't, will never know. <laughs> Unless you watch it? the podcast, you may. <laughs> and subscribe to the channel. Uh, sorry. Can I say that I actually had not realized how many really nice skins came out of Iceberg Saga until semi-recently. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I the Char when, stuff was great. Yeah, like when I was working on my first Legendary, I was trying to figure out ways to expedite the fact that I had like next to none of the... Oh, it's like a dragon energy orb thing that you need for one of the crafting sets, uh, for one of the steps that you do during the process. And um, I was going, I don't have enough of these, and uh, there's only a low chance they drop from the chest, so how else can I do this? And I was looking at some of the achievements where you could collect all of the different, um, like, special effect weapon sets and things that uh, were released during Iceberg Saga, and I was like, this will be easy. It was not easy, and it wasn't the way that I ended up doing it, but it did lead me to a lot of those skins, including the ones that are... Oh, what is the actual set called? Fornax, you might remember. They are... Um, they're from the uh, the map that has the Jormag Whispers, that two-part one that has the Raven Light puzzles, and they uh, are like very, very uh, Nordic in design. And they like the first step. Uh, they have these like like the swirl carvings on them. Are they just it's the stone marches. ones, and then you can get the ones which is about, You're talking there? about the runic armor. The boreal weapons. The boreal oh, weapons. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. They're yes, cool. the boreal weapons. Like the upgraded version of them is so much more beautiful than I ever realized. Yeah, so they're I pretty kind of basic. The base those. ones. Mm -hmm. But the upgraded is gorgeous. And then yeah, like stormcaller stuff. Bad. All of those were beautiful, and I had never yeah. really like 
gone that far into them. So then I just started kind of casually working on crafting those because I'd never collected all of them. And they're super cool and they're just there in the game. You don't have to buy from the cash shop or anything. Mm -hmm. Work on it. That's awesome. I'm going to ask another quick question. Very good point. Yeah. But as we've said before, a lot of these things are hidden behind achievements that no one ever gets to see. So please, make it more obvious that people can do stuff in the game that's very cool. <laughs> We've had this discussion many times. Um, mm. We would love that. And anyway. We would. There, there was a great question here that I think from someone from Rook's community asked, and it was... Da, 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 da. I've got it. I just scrolled away from it, though. Give me two seconds. Um... Unless I deleted it. <laughs> I've now deleted it, apparently. And that's okay. It's fine. It was a great <laughs> question. Um, oh, no. Here we go. Uh, what would be one thing you wish you knew before starting the game? Doesn't have to be a bad thing, obviously. It could also be something positive that surprised you in a good way. So, like, something it would have been nice to know, maybe nice to know before the game, but also maybe something that was a pleasant surprise Maybe when you first started. I'm not sure about that question. It's a bit. It was from Nivali as well from uh, Rook's community. Um, but yeah, I guess to go with that first bit, what would be one thing you wish you knew before starting the game? Anything like, you know, and that could be like, you've heard uh, this about Guild Wars 2, but actually it doesn't, it does this, which is different. I... Like maybe raids or something. I wish I would have known how, uh, how, impactful it was going to be on my life and my career mm. and so that i would have started recording my reactions from day one i have Good. the beta nice but the, i recorded i recorded a reaction to the beta but then i just like literally no life to the game for like the first year mm -hmm. um and then i didn't start content creating for it until like midway through season one mm -hmm. and so like i don't have any of my reactions to mm discovering literally about the game like basic yeah. stuff like dynamic events and you know seeing the shadow behemoth for the first time seeing the world bosses for the first time um just all of that like base game stuff like mm. i don't have those reactions so that would be that would be really cool to know that <laughs> yeah that's actually a really cool answer there you go awesome anyone else is there anything you would have wished you'd known before i guess sometimes maybe you just don't want to know anything right like when you when I approach an MMORPG, I'm always researching. Like the thing I look at, looked at with for, I think, I wish I'd known about PvP being as awesome as it was. I knew it was great, but like World of Your World was the main thing I went in for like the first year. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe don't... this, maybe the content creation side actually. I kind of like that answer. <laughs> I might steal that one because I'm like, you know, I started, I started, I started by. PvP. I my first ever pot, like live stream was a PvP tournament. There were six teams, um, but it went down to two, and <laughs> I it was twenty gold was div divvied up between two teams, um, and everyone paid like five gold or something like that. So it was more than twenty, obviously. And then we just divvied up the gold, and I got my con first shoutcasting gig from that with esl it was like first i did a stream then i worked with esl and like if you don't know who esl are at the time they were the hugest like global esports company in the world and like it was like okay cool what <laughs> so that was like yeah um an interesting time anyway not not on not on point for the question um grand herald or um sorry fornex or rook or Ravi, anything um, you would have liked to have known before? I, I think I think people come I think there were quite a few like misconceptions because Guild Wars 2 is seen as a very different MMO. And I feel like that's a negative thing. And it really isn't. If you've played World of Warcraft, if you play Final Fantasy, mm. then you can you you're gonna be able to just jump in and play. Nothing is going to be elusive or difficult. The game is is actually as 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 much as we complain about them not holding your hand. Mm -hmm. There is vast amount of content that is actually laid before you. You don't have to know anything about the world. You don't have to know anything. It will take you by the hand and lead you from 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 
the very beginning right through to the end game. It, it, and it, it's very directed. But if you are the type of player who likes exploration, who likes going off the beaten track, who likes to like do your own thing, there's vast amounts more for you out there as well. So I think that people uh, can be a bit off put, especially like the game is a is a decade in. And some people have a certain amount of trepidation coming into a very established game, especially like content creators. Mm. You know, we are, you, you, I think that there's a there's a fallacy that you have to know everything about this game before you can make content about it. And I don't think that that is true. And I don't think that everyone is looking for someone to tell them exactly how to min max a game. I think that some people just want to hear what your thoughts are and how you interface with the game. And they want to see it through a spectrum, not just the min maxing DPS speed run shit, you know? Um, so, so what was your answer? <laughs> I'm so <laughs> confused. I'm like, well, I knew we would take this further. <laughs> like, we always say, no, no, don't apologize. It's good stuff. I'm just like, I was just thinking like, where are we? <laughs> like... So, so it, to sum up, it's, okay. it, an easy game to get into. Yeah. There's lots of exploration. There's misconceptions about the game. And what right. I would say to anybody is suck it and see. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Get in there and play it yourself because you mm. can't experience the world through the lens of another person. You have to do it yourself. You have mm. to do it yourself. And it's True. free to play. So you've got fuck all to lose. Jump in, have some fun. <laughs> Another thing I'd like to see be used in the official Guild Wars 2 marketing, you've got fuck all to lose. <laughs> Just come in, have fun. Uh, I mean, I guess my thing, there's a lot of little things I wish I'd known. RPGs and Bokka's Bokka communities are like, they're swearing here. <laughs> yes, you remember my channel, you remember me, right? <laughs> I'm like, hello. He knows where and he was sending he gets, his audience. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. He, he, he raids. Less, I'm not around as much anymore, so they might have forgotten me. Um, but like, <laughs> they're swearing here, it's okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, go on. Um, it's okay, but I was just going to say, there's a lot of little things I wish I'd known. But I think one of the biggest things for me is that I wish I had known how they delivered their storytelling. It took me years of playing this game to realize that like when I was in a story instance, I should almost zoom in my camera and like mm. frame the characters are, that are there on the screen and listen to every piece of dialogue in the exchange that they have and follow them across the map and make sure they're all done before I go do the next thing and then double check to make sure that nobody's gone off into some corner to talk. And the same goes for maps, like that there are just event change there's not going to be a bunch of side quests with cutscenes and things like that that will direct me to that but that if i actually go through those event chains and i follow various npcs i see that i will be a part of that and at the time i think like when i was first getting into it on stream the community was like trying to indicate to me that that was the case mm. but because i was coming from so many other games it just didn't process like in almost every other MMO when you're just running around and some character has a little speech bubble pop up over their head. Typically, it's just going to be like a huzzah or like, you know, just something that doesn't matter. If like I don't a, get a huzzah when I get back into the game, like, <laughs> as soon as I get in, then I'm going to be very sad. It's usually just some little tidbit of throwaway something, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. or just some little piece that leads you into something. It's not the meat of a live yeah. story that is unfolding around you, because mm -hmm. usually when that's happening your camera's going to direct you and i think that when i was playing people as always were really well-meaning but rather than you know saying like rick actually the way guild wars 2 does it storytelling is different and this is kind of why and like a lot of this ambient dialogue has you know all this stuff and it's immersive storytelling a lot of times people would just be like why do you not care about it <laughs> <laughs> wait okay well rook's just like not like rook's not letting anybody talk anymore again oh, rook is oh just i've not like had this over. impression before <laughs> what was that? This Can my, you name this, this is, impression? Yeah. Like, is that the is catch? My, is that the like? No, this is my chat gamer? bro. Oh, yeah, chat backseat bro. gamer chat okay. bro. I like the chat bro one. Yeah, that's just good. Like, oh, there goes Rook talking over <laughs> the dialogue again. <laughs> and so, because of that, no joke, it irked me so much. It irked me so much that like I was enjoying this thing and I was trying to talk about it and I was excited and that people were like making these little backhand comments to some degree that even though I don't think I showed it, right? It just built up this wall of me even like I would just tune out what was happening yeah, on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I would just like tune out mm -hmm, what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had known or like even had it kind of laid out from the get go, like 
hey, actually, this is kind of how it goes. And like, this is what it is. And now it's one of the greatest strengths that I talk about, like mm. avidly, you know, and I'll try to explain to people. And my playthrough of End of Dragons was the first expansion that I went around and I started realizing, hey, I can almost make this a more cinematic experience for myself. I can zoom into first person and I can frame those characters that are talking. I can move my character in between them and toggle my RP walk and we can all like walk up together. And I think that took the story to me to a level that even though I had loved the story and played the game for years, I had not, it hadn't clicked in that kind of way. Mm. That this wasn't a sit back, grab your popcorn kind of story, that it was something that I was a literal part of. And mm -hmm. that like the way that I myself navigated literally those quests, those missions, that world was a fundamental building block of how I would experience the narrative. And that was huge for me. So I wish I had known that coming in, that maybe some of the community, maybe a note for if any of you are trying to get your friends into the game. I would just say, like, as much as you can, try to, like, open doors for new players as opposed to, like, being dismissive of the way that they're experiencing a game. Because oftentimes it's probably just that they straight up don't know that what is being said in tiny speech bubbles halfway across the map is important. <laughs> like, mm. I didn't, I never knew. I was exploring the zone. I was fighting the monsters. I was doing the thing. I was in the instance. So it never dawned on me that if some rando was halfway across the map... Yeah, but I they do that sometimes, and it kind of interferes with themselves sometimes <laughs> as well. So there is that kind yeah. of part. It's, it can yeah. get difficult, absolutely. R Rather... failed, failed states, by the way. Failed states. Mm -hmm. Failed states of um, meta events that happen that can trigger something else. That... That's a thing. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, that's yeah, true. that's a good point. Especially if you want to craft Nevermore. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, um, or like some yeah. of the, all of them. You have to any tier, any of those legendaries because it's the same with hope. You need the quaggan to get turned into. You know, you need yeah. them to get corrupted Ugh. in the um, thingy, the map up north, for then so you can then kill them. So I was like, I had yeah. to watch this quaggan get corrupted so I can get this one item for hope, and I was like, you no, <laughs> this is sad. <laughs> like, why? It was a bit and weird. Back then when Heart of Thorn came out, that was really tough because everybody what like were doing the events and stuff, it's still but tough, they weren't Rob. failing. <laughs> yeah, no. I made hope. I think it was around the same time as you. It was horrible. Yeah. Um. But in terms of, uh, I do agree with Rook on like the story aspect, especially now that Living World Season One is is back. Sorry, I keep talking about mm. it because I'm obsessed really with it right it. now. Yeah, that's just your thing uh, right now. It's I'm, good. I'm, like, yeah, and I've never cared for story. Like, I'm sorry, but it was because it felt like I was missing something. And now that it's come out, definitely like do what Rook says and just really invest yourself and immerse yourself, immerse, immerse, uh, on. In, yeah, playing in VR, story. just get in there. Just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's so laughs> you can good. do it. People have played it in VR. Obsession, Weird. yes. And in terms of another things that I wish I had known before is when I started raiding when raids came out. And unfortunately, it was around the time that community was quite toxic. So I got mm. like close to people that weren't the best in terms of like bringing more positivity and openness. And so I was part of those people that like, kicked and stuff and then i wish i had known sooner that this was something i would hate about myself and now like i i redeemed it now by like making sure that i do a lot of training and stuff but it mm. really was not worth it to get so intense into it so much so that you kind of like i was never one of those that insulted people and stuff but i was part of those groups and i regret it now like because mm. like yeah it wasn't great. So don't get toxic is also something. I think you I can get. Raise. I think we've probably all been guilty of doing something similar in some way, shape, or form. I definitely am in PvP games. Like I'm awful, but I just keep it to myself now. I've done yeah. that. I've tried to. Or I type it in the chat and I delete it. Um, yeah. So I've got it out of my system. Unfortunately, sometimes there is an accidental send. Uh, and then uh, someone clips yeah. it. <laughs> and then you're like, damn, okay, that's on the internet forever. Um, <laughs> At least it wasn't too bad. That's a really, really good point. Yeah, absolutely. I think just all in all, I think there was a really good comment. Uh, I think it was Thomas T. Gnome who said, you know, just let people just play the game and don't rush to 80. I think that's actually one of the best suggestions I could say. It's not really, I mean, it can transfer to advice, I guess, but also in a way that 
I wish I hadn't, I didn't rush. I definitely took my time. I take my time much more in MMOs now. Um, just take time. The world is so awesome. And that it's not, it's not the same as other MMOs because I think that there is no MMORPG other than maybe Rift where I'm like the leveling experience was fun and fun in every single map. The map exploration in that sense is just, I don't think there's, there's not many games that can be here for me, honestly, because it's not just about the sights and the stories. It's about like the jumping puzzles and the little training areas. And these just the dynamic events and stuff as you go through that first time, that first time is so cool. So I just say, if you're like, I think I just wish I'd known that it wasn't that typical kind of kind of experience where leveling leveling through maps was just kind of just burn through um, because I did a bit of that at the beginning and then I kind of learned that it was just so good and then I went back and did map completion because now I just and then I just I think from the second or third map in I was like no this is too good like getting all these vistas like vistas what's a vista a vista's so cool um, that was just and because I I'm a big camera guy like I did camera work for a long time as well and when those came up i was like whoa and i did every screenshot for every single one i haven't got them anymore because that was 10 years ago but like it, i'm still doing it now like i still take pictures of every single vista when i when i hit them again um but yeah just enjoy the game play through it very just chill like don't don't rush it don't get that level 80 boost i mean if you really need to i guess do it but do what you want but just just try to explore the game in your own at your own pace and time i'm gonna ask one more if that's all right peeps um thank you for those questions we got loads of questions um as well actually which was kind of fun da, da, da. what maybe i'll ask two more um if you could add one emote for two guild wars 2 what would it be and that was the daydreaming d emote to guild wars 2 oh good question Oh geez, I I use three emotes prolifically in Final Fantasy fourteen: blow kiss, hug, and squats. <laughs> Wait, what? So, <laughs> <laughs> blow kiss, hug, and squats, in which you do squats, which I may or may not sometimes just use because I think it's funny, and sometimes use to meme on people like T-Bag. <laughs> it also makes me laugh. <laughs> And we have a play dead emote in the game. So if you play dead, then somebody can go up to you and do inappropriate things. So, so that confused. to be said, I love more <laughs> inappropriate emotes in Guild Wars 2. Uh, no, I, 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 you just like want to do ERP. <laughs> Were we talking about like <laughs> RP with, but with the E oh. in the beginning? Or like, do, do you need that? <laughs> oh, I don't need actual emotes in the game to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I even said that because I know. <laughs> Oh, look no, at I... you getting... <laughs> oh, look at Rick. I've never seen Rick like this. You should. Oh. You oh. should. I would never. I'm very innocent, just like Jebro. I don't know anything about the world. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> Wait. Uh, no, I... I would like, I just want more. I want more of anything that they want to give us for emotes, honestly. Spice um, is what you want, mostly. No, if it's funny. Honest. It's funny just because no. I like I mostly use the squats emote just for funsies in raid with like okay. raid, you know, guildies or friends or things like that. But I do really like little blow kiss, like when you blow a kiss to someone. I think that's super cute. I love hug emotes because I think they're just um, delightful. And I really like that Guild Wars Two did the tea table where you can actually like all sit down together and do mm, something. That's cool. So, yeah. Kind of like I think. I think Destiny 2 also has interactive emotes where you like can, you can dance, as a, you, you can, can invite do it as a group. And... There's a couple. Yeah. There's so not many. I think yeah. some interactive ones would be really fun if you could do different little silly things. Or I know at some point somebody, I think I was talking about this on stream, and somebody mentioned, like, wouldn't it be cute if you could like lift um, an Asura like up on your shoulder or something? Like little things like that, mm. I just think would be really charming. Um, so I'd be into anything like that. But honestly, just like, even the basic ones, I love all the ones that they have in here, but even stuff that's, you know, just adding on to our waves and, and things like that, just, you know, um, little conversational mm. things where it looks like you're talking to one another or um, just a slew of like happy, sad, smile. We have some of those, but I mean, even more than that, I'd love to see mm. because um, they're a little limited, but they've been adding some really fun ones into the game. Yeah. Anyone I'd like else? a rookie mart. Oh, no, one? with the finger and the V. 
like rook does oh, under this? her chin. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. That, is <laughs> that the would thing be good. Pets right? it thoughtful. <laughs> they have that already. One? The Asura has that as their um, uh, idol. They do. What about one mm -hmm. where you open up a Snargle Gold Claw novel and start reading it? You and the emote mine. is like, you <laughs> oh, That's a rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those are mine. Those are mine. <laughs> are you sure? Like, are you, do you want to add any more? No. Um, uh, what do no, we go? No. Okay, there would be slash read. There would be slash read where you pull out a, a novel and start reading it. And then there would be slash yeah. read smut and where you like kind of hide it. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, if it, no, yeah. you've got to be proud of that. You just show it to everyone. <laughs> like, you read it. Just and naked you get, pictures like, of Asuras. You read it Sorry. and then you look up and you get like a knowing look like Or oh, you just get red, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slash read cold claw. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah, no. Nice. I also want the uh uh in in Final Fantasy fourteen, some of the mini pets can like go up on your shoulder. Yeah, that's good. I want something yeah. that the you know, whichever ones are appropriate will like sit on your shoulder on your head or like again interact with you it's pretty somehow. amazing how they do that honestly pet, where it actually lines up correctly with the pet yeah. you know well they did they the were pet. when during like the extra live stream when um colin and bobby and stuff were on there and i would advise anyone to go back and watch that when it was Colin Bobby, and I can't remember his name as well, they were talking about all of these different projects they had of Guild Wars 2, and they talked about the Polymox stuff and also using miniatures as something they were going to do for battles as well. And I was just like remembering that and thinking, like, you know, how much stuff they could do in Final Fantasy fourteen feature is so cool. It is very unique, actually. I don't like that. Like, there's a lot of different miniatures I'd like to just, like, hang out with in different ways, I guess. They're kind of doing that with the um, the bots, I guess, to a degree. You can win them, at least, and they can sit around and keep bobbing around with you, and they do something else, but that's really not a... It's just a skin, isn't it? Anyway. Um... So you have the whistle of the pet, you know, the Basenji pet and stuff. Oh, yeah. Those are kind of cool, and that's you train true. them every day and yeah. stuff. And that was a, oh, actually a free prime drop. What if you could train them? Like, if you had that pet and you trained them, it would like unlock the mini version of them, and you would have emo like emotes you could do to them while they were out with you as a mini, where you could like make them sit and stuff like that because you trained them in those skills or whatever, and they'd have those special actions. That would be cool. I'd love that. Mm. That'd be cool. I would also that love. Oh yeah, I'd also love a uh, eat spicy noodles, like a kinang noodle bowl. That'd be fun oh and like God. eat it. I want, oh, I want all the food in Cantha. One would be good. Oh. Yeah, there's that new one that was good. Can you just use the normal hiss one? Is it just a normal one that like you just use, or do you have to buy it or win it or get it somehow? There's the Some new hiss like emote behind achievements, which are really annoying. I, I kind of don't mind that because I like the reward tracks in PvP. You can get them in reward tracks, so you can just do no more progress. It's not too difficult. I, I don't mind yeah. it too much. Don't I think... you have to unlock it from the story first? No, no, no. I don't think so. Oh. No. You can do it in World of World and PvP, yeah. I think you might have to get to a certain spot, maybe, or start it. I can't remember. I have to double check. Final Fantasy has a cool thing whereby each um, profession or class has its own kind of fancy flourish. Like if you're a white mage, you twirl your staff, and if you're a pu pugilist, you have a little like flip flop down, uh, dance. Well, and is it an idol or something? Or? No, it's slash it's victory. like yeah. Um, there you go. It's you can so do lovely. that for slash you slash ranked. You can do show your finisher. Something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And um, there was, I don't know whether any of, you, any of you played it, like many, many moons ago, mm -hmm. I played a game called Ion. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Pong. No, right. I, I played um, Ion, which was yeah, like a Ion. PvP yeah, hybrid. And, it, and they had some of the most exquisite True. emotes I'd ever seen. Yeah. So if you, you type forward slash cloud and a puffy cloud would appear and you'd kind of elegantly like sit on it and like drape backwards sort of like peel me a grape style. <laughs> and then there was like you could like summon like golden harps and things and Ugh. and like meditate and you'd like you'd like become this Zen goddess like, you know, in a pose. It was so beautiful. It was a very good. 
MMORPG. If you've not played it's, it, you should go and play yeah. it. It's, they relaunched, they did fresh start service, I think, and all that relaunch of it, all that kind of stuff. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. But that was a blast in the past. They had absolutely beautiful wings as well in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the PvP was good apparently as well. I was it was on the same time as Warhammer Online, so I didn't get into it as much as I would have liked. Warhammer Online was my thing then. Along with Rift. Rift, if you've never played Rift before, oh my god, I swear. Please go and play that. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Emotes, what good would game. I want? I like I don't, I don't know. I would love um one where even if a character's not bald, their Shame head does like yeah. a sparkle glint for you. And it, yeah, it's like a Deborah specific good. emote, and it's like a bing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Amazing. I'd like to. I like it there to be a creator emote and just pull out a pair of headphones with a microphone on and just be like this. <laughs> <laughs> like so that, we, and then you could RP when like you know Timey's trying to talk to you and you just pull out these headphones and just go like this. That'd be pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> oh, also I could be a commentator in the game. That would be cool. <laughs> um. Didn't they add G Guild War? Didn't they add I Aeon Wings to Guild Wars One? I have no idea. Yes, yes, they did. They did. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah. It was like a cross promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. What? They're like an a, official an thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forget what the wow. conditions were. Either like you buy both games or some pre-order I oh. Aeon or something. I don't remember how you got it, but uh, Interesting. yeah, you, you were doing a slash emote. And I think your character, I think it was like the Paragon animation where they like kind of float up into the air, I think. Yeah. Um, and like the wings would come out and like flap and then go back down. And it was the Aeon wings. Interesting. Uh -huh. An MMORPG doing a cross motion with, a, with kind back of then. an ARPG. Yeah, like back then as well when they was, almost was... crossing over to a point, but not completely, right? That's really good. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Okay. One more question. And then that's it. And I think this is a good one. Um, Scalet, who was in chat earlier and Twitch, and I just want to say thank you as well to people in Rook's community who did pop questions in. They're good ones, but they're going to be a bit too long um, because they're great questions, but we could make a podcast on them. There was Tempest, Conclusory, and Navali. There was Matze as well, um, and Utugu, and Tempest as well. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, but Scalet had one, and it was... Uh, since we have big lore nerds, and this could go into a wild one, but don't just you can maybe make it very general and very not half an hour. Um, where do you think season six will bring us, and what will it focus on? Maybe we could just say, you know, or the next living world season. Um, where are we going? What could be some of the main storylines? We don't have to go too in depth, but you could also just be like, it is a big question, I realize that, but like, just. And it could be anything. Think you can think unicorns, and you can think whatever you want, like or something just randomly wild and funny. Just one thing each. What could it be a storyline, and where could it be? Planning Cass and Jory's wedding. <gasps> oh, that was such a good one. <laughs> good job. Yes, love it. Where? Where though? Has to be aware. That's the question. We got to go scout. We got to scout the entire world. Oh, I guess yeah. That's just part of the whole thing. The perfect venue. Damn. With was, them, of course. You have to come and, you know, check them out, check it out. Okay. All right. I'm like, that was good. That was good. Off the bat. Okay. How are we feeling? Mine is uh, whatever's happening in Raisu Temple. I think. Yeah, I or, uh, Raisu, excuse me, Raisu Palace. Raisu mm -hmm. Palace. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's right there. Yeah. We've had mentions that something bad is happening over there and or that even if, uh, you know, our current empress doesn't want to reclaim it and rule from it, that there might still be something that is corruptive or corrosive or a threat that's over there. And if you complete the uh, Kinding City jump puzzle that's in the old the old portion of the city, you go all the way up and there's the spirit that's up there. Um, she talks about the fact that there's a threat coming from the temple, or gosh, I keep saying temple, coming from the <laughs> palace that she has been keeping an eye on and that she's getting increasingly concerned about. So, Ooh. I don't know, but that's my guess. That's my guess. Okay. <laughs> Robert and Harold? Um, Phonics? Uh, I, would, I would say, again, going back to my Living World Season 1 obsession, I yeah. want to see more Farron. I just want to see more Farron. I don't, like, he's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> 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 and I feel like we haven't had enough of him in, in uh, End of Dragons, so season six, just make it fair. 
season Fair. six. Make uh, it you know what? <laughs> if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna make it, make it Farron. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. But where? In a cauldron, uh, well, in a cauldron naked? <laughs> yeah. That, that was. Yes. That was in season one. Anyway. You had to rescue him from a cauldron and he was naked. Yeah, right? exactly. He and Scarlet enjoying. is just like laughing and just doing <laughs> dance while it was. It was great. <laughs> I've got my storyline already, but we're going with uh, four next next. Great one. All oh, really good. Solid answers. Just the one. Just the just the one. Just only one. <laughs> just, yes. just the one. One and where? Fuck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's not the answer. I mean, I, I mean, I guess we then have to ask who. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a random. Sounds like a short storyline for so many. <laughs> I gave that up for Lent. I gave that up for Lent. No. Um. Shit. So you want the Snargle expansion? <laughs> <laughs> I love that exchange that they have. It's so good. We'll have um, the dark bringers soon, but then I'm like, how do can you get darker than this? <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, like... th I'm being very polite. I don't know what's wrong. God Almighty. Um, mm -hmm. No. So just one. I so you, the more you say it, the, the it's not going to change. <laughs> like, just, just, just fine, one. fine. I'm just I'm, I'm learning to accept it. So there was a dark force pushing out the 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 denizens of the deep ocean okay it's it's it pushed them out it is it was not the the water dragon it wasn't it wasn't suan mm -hmm. so what is it so mm. this expansion this storyline will include underwater mm -hmm. exploration so that we can have like treasure hunts it doesn't necessarily have to be um like we've combat, just got about 50 down it... votes on this video because you said water combat <laughs> no 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 water combat although i don't i don't want a combat come on but, so we have loads of like deep sea exploration atlantis type mm, yeah. like bubbles of mm -hmm. of um think like doma um for, for 14 players um mm. with their bubbles underneath the ocean and we have of course the best race in the game Come on. Wait, Anybody? Uh, oh, oh the, um, the ones yeah, with the wings? Exactly. The wing people? Yeah, the Lagos. Yes. So we yeah. have the Lagos, yes. Lagos. That's it. We have the Lagos. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and and we have this Wait, new dark... playable race is the Lagos as well? Oh, well, that should, yes, of course. Right? I like and... how we think this is now the expansion and now we're going this into is now, features. This is... You are confirmed <laughs> Good job. that this is the expansion. Okay. <laughs> And, and we have that dark, deep, foreboding, Lovecraftian monsters that we were promised in the fucking trailer, with the with the boat going down and the tentacles coming. Yeah, that's what we get. That's, so you that, want tentacles? As well. That is my that is my daddy. I want a pony. That is what I want. Okay, okay well that's fair enough. I did say Great. the unicorn <laughs> Ford, stuff. So I guess Fordex wants an R-rated, super spicy tentacle expansion, <laughs> and I'm here for it. Live your dreams. No shame here. With Lagos <laughs> as the playable race. Okay. That, that's fine. That's all right. Bondage Lagos. Dominatrix Lagos. Okay, all right. <laughs> I like it. That's my Sign love. me up. Yeah, I'm ready. I've been training my whole life for this. I don't want to crack. I've been training my <laughs> Mine's so tame in comparison. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'm... Uh, yeah. Um... I just want to say I appreciate doing a podcast with, like, four awesome women as well. Like honestly, Aww. just you're Aww. great. You're great people. Oh, um, I don't know why I just randomly got an emotional moment for a second. Um, that happens on this podcast. I have I have <laughs> these moments, people. Um, I don't know why I randomly had that thought. Um, it's Aww. for me. Thank you for being our host. No, I appreciate you. All. I've, got, I've got some random you. water yeah. in my eyes right now, and I'm not sure why. It was just an instant moment. <laughs> um, get out of there. Go away. <laughs> no feelings here. No feelings. Only tentacles. I... Nothing to do with the dominatrix Lagos. Nothing. <laughs> that was the moment. <laughs> that happened. Oh no! A naked Farron. That was the thing. I was just yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> 
nominate so for funny. some Argos, and it's like, I was just, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it's just because it gives me so much joy to talk about so many things genuinely, and like, no one, no one really, no. One, I feel like there's a lot of people that come in this podcast and they really release a lot of themselves that they may may not feel they're able to sometimes, and or they just do <laughs> their normal stuff, and I'm just glad that they feel like comfortable. Um, so for me, it would be joko oriented um joko will be reborn uh and there will be mini joko like kind of baby group uh it would be baby joko he would be a good guy and your focus would be going back to path of fire and you would then see how his path could just not just doesn't change he still becomes evil but you're still his friend as well like nothing changes even though he's been reborn he still goes down the same path Ooh. All right, well, that's I'm a choice. In. The only unfortunate thing is that we go back to Path of Fire. That's the only bad part of it. Oh, <laughs> Path of Fire wow. doesn't deserve that. Path of Fire we got has there. Hey, I liked fired. the ball. I liked it. I just don't like the maps that much. It's a bit dull. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're just not great compared to like Camphor and half ones and that's just my personal opinion okay i did love the story from path of fire though oh yeah so the good. story was yeah. cool. very yeah. unique and different it wasn't dragons <laughs> so i was just like <laughs> i like the dragons they're cool but please like get, give you some more god stuff oh yeah and uh when the gods come back as well there you go <laughs> yeah, bro, i'm so sorry <laughs> I can't make it for the the next podcast because you just slandered dragons. So I, <laughs> I, did, I, said I like them at the beginning. Okay, fine. Fine. We're gonna we're gonna end. He, he likes them. He just couldn't eat a whole one. That's that's the that's the truth of the matter. What? Okay. What? <laughs> we're talking about drag. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> ching. Right, we're gonna go and end the podcast now. Uh, because we're done. <laughs> it's like chicken. Yeah. It's like chicken. Yes, clearly. I've been eating crocodile before in uh, uh, Africa. Actually, that was kind of wild. Um, wild. <laughs> I'm a vegan <laughs> here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry now. Don't, Sorry. don't, don't eat things. Don't nothing with a I face. Know, it's I too know. much. It's too much. Wait. Okay. Right. But unless it's Joko, and then go for it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's a bit like you know terrible okay so <laughs> if anyone doesn't have anything else to add um, i'm pretty much gonna end the podcast there i want to say thank you to our awesome and amazing guests i just do want to say as well thank you to everyone that's been on the podcast this year for you um even if you were just on the show once and you're listening or you were here watching or supporting in some kind of way you had a watch or a listen on spotify or in the many places where this podcast takes place thank you so much for your support we hit over fifty-two thousand uh listens on um anchor as well recently which is where the podcast gets distributed we are you know the amount of time that <laughs> that's gone into this podcast you know is significant so if you ever want to go and listen to a bunch of content there is you can listen to many many of these podcasts on your drives to work or drives around the entire world um, honestly you could probably do that so please go and check out those wonderful people as well their stuff will be in the description below same with any uh podcast we do if they've got a link to buy the game go and support them that way go and check out their twitch stream uh, a lot of these peeps stream pretty often i know Harold fornax is still kind of deciding if that's going to be a thing um but they still do youtube so go and check them out there and you can find on their socials there as well and they're going to talk about those very quickly as we do an outro um <clears throat> pardon me i just want to say thank you as well like for the last two years since we've been doing this I, it has been my anchor for the week um which has grounded me and i've had a good time and it's been a place where i can laugh and have fun with my friends and talk about nerdy shit including um you know tentacles and and uh, all other <laughs> things that we that we imagine um so i appreciate you all very much and uh, everyone that comes in and hangs out this has given us the opportunity to do the podcast live on the guild wars 2 channel as well as part of extra life which was you know really really big thing um and i got to talk about that with nick Hernandez, and we're gonna have some devs on in the future as well which i'm trying to work on as well um so there's big things planned for next year so it's not slowing down and um, we'll probably be hopefully every week still uh, at this time of 1 p.m pacific um things may change here and there depending um, but yeah, I hope you are having a great holiday. Hope you're spending some time on yourself. 
um that is the most important thing obviously partner and everything the people you want to really spend that time with try and get that if you can i know we have to do the things but you know don't have to do it just think about it you know just be good to yourself is all i ask um otherwise thank you to all our guests we're gonna do a mini outro aurora peachy awesome to see you today thank you so much for being Me here too. yeah absolutely miss this hopefully we can get you on next year a few times i'll be good i'm gonna hassle you um <laughs> yeah, hassle you ever um <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself what what do you do where do you do it and give us some timings and stuff and where people can see you maybe over the holiday season and the new year i stream uh randomly on twitch uh now but uh it's at least at least two or three times a week and uh, I'm playing, uh, we always talk about Guild Wars 2 whenever there's big updates, um, but I play a lot of JRPGs, a lot of Final Fantasy, Square Enix games, uh, Fire Emblem, we're going through, and uh, just just loving what we love and chilling and hanging out. Uh, put out reaction videos on YouTube, um, active on Twitter, have a Discord server, everywhere uh, you can find me is uh, at Aurora Peachy. One word, no underscores. <laughs> Thank oh, you. you went you just like died did I, did for I go a second out? you I, went out for a oh. second i spoke too softly when i said no underscore oh the underscore i heard <laughs> it was like something afterwards wow that was like you know oh, sultry no underscore. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> i no can't underscoring me. see i'm not one of those people who can talk with the microphone like this all the time because i'm squealy and like reactive yeah, and right. loud so i just i wish i could talk like this all the time but i just can't because i can't rein myself in because there's all this you, you pull energy yourself just away to get out. as well you pull yourself I away You're i like do it. i try <laughs> i try not to blow out everyone's ears but i make no promises <laughs> there we go petition to get me or a me to the, say underscore more uh, <laughs> 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 no you're very welcome i'm glad you could make it um, okay, Rook, tell us what you do, where you do it, and tell us what you're up to in the moment. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm Rook or Rookery online, so you can find me on Twitch at Rookery. That's R O O K U R I. Usually live over there two to three days a week. When I'm not on my own channel, I'm probably either doing this podcast or Aetherite Radio over another channel, um, Gamer Escapes channel on Twitch. And you can also find I I try so hard to get at least one video out a week on YouTube. Sometimes we get more than that. Sometimes depending on what's going on, we get less than that. But um, we do that a lot we do a lot of reactions and other content lore content we have done a musical cover over there so if you haven't seen that check it out that's also rookery on youtube and then you can find me on twitter at rookery underscore um, and at instagram just at rookery uh, as of now i'm hoping that at some point if twitter doesn't completely burn i'll be able to get rid of that underscore the underscore um on my name over on twitter but uh until then that's the only place where you have to add it on at the end uh, otherwise i'm i'm doing a variety right now so i'm just going to be playing dragon age inquisition but we'll have a ton more final fantasy 14 and guild wars 2 content yes. in january and with all the new stuff that's coming out there i gave myself a little holiday treat which was to indulge my burning desire to play through dragon age again with all the news and other things that have been coming out um about it so uh yeah. if you want to come hang out and check it out a little change of pace feel free yeah that was that netflix season i need to watch that actually is that netflix yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. oh it's so good it is so it. good <laughs> please watch it it's oh, so amazing I will say, if you've never played any dragon age this just is a general blanket statement for everybody if you've never played any dragon age and especially if you haven't played inquisition it's probably not going to make all that much sense um it's not i think as good of an intro to dragon age as arcane was for people who knew nothing about league of legends mm. myself included um it's definitely meant more to like tie into everything and i think give us some setup for the next game it's but like it's still story. really good yeah, and it's yeah, fun yeah. and you can still watch it it's not going to be the end of the world but okay. Yeah, I was playing for it myself on stream. It was very fun, but I didn't. I just had to stop after a while because I was like, it's just a lot to take in all the time. I was like, I'm playing it once a week, maybe once every two weeks. I'm forgetting things. I need to play it just for myself every day. Awesome to have you here. Thank you so much, my friend, as well as the two awesome peeps we just had on because Fornex did a smile with their avatar. You are next. Tell us little things. Where's to see you being an avatar? VTuber. Um, <laughs> VTuber is pretty much exclusively here. I don't really include myself in oh, my yeah, videos. That's true, but yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you should, maybe you uh, should. 
Yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I should. Um, so I make YouTube content about Guild Wars 2 and a few other games as well. I'm a bit of a law nerd for the whole Lord of the Rings as well. And um, yeah, uh, but yeah, you'll find me on YouTube. You'll find me on uh, t Twitter until it bursts into flames. Um, mm. And yeah, I'll be appearing here as long as Jed Bro will keep letting me in. That, that's yeah, what's you're happen. in that corn groove of papes. That's it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, you know, no. but, yeah. Well, everyone, please have a wonderful uh, winter festival, however you celebrate it, mm. and uh, take care of yourselves and have a wonderful time. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, the first person who has celebrated Christmas in the podcast, because hey. they're in <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, hi, I'm Rava, and I'm Rava on Twitch, and otherwise Ravalicious everywhere else. I also try, like, group to publish one video a week on YouTube, but it's been two months and it hasn't happened because I injured my back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. I'll get back to editing very, very soon. Um, and yeah, I am live almost every day, seven hours from now, and I do end game content mostly, but I'm getting into lore and, and I really Good. like it. And um, yeah, if you want to learn how to do Raids of Fractals, my stream is where you can do that. And uh, yeah, I like her for next says, have a Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Holidays, everybody. Mm -hmm. And Jeb, thank you again for re-inviting me. It means the world because I was very sad when uh, I had to say no from, because of my back uh, a few months ago. So it's really nice like to be able to come back. Yeah, I wanted to have you back on for ages. It's just uh, making sure you're yeah. well enough to and, you know, I'm glad that yeah. we could get you on good stuff. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, again for joining us. That is the last show of uh, 2022, unless I randomly decide to put one on next week, which is doubtful. <laughs> unless I do a dark bringers, which might be a thing. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to have a little bit of time off for a week and enjoy myself or just sit on the sofa and watch a ton of TV and do... Enjoy your giant turkey. Oh, yeah, yes. the turkey that I'm going to have myself. All the leftovers. I'm going to make Yorkshire puddings from scratch on Sunday as well because I don't have them in America. And I cannot wait to just fail at that. Or just make really good ones, honestly. Like, who knows? I don't care either way. It's going to be fine. Um, also, I've be also got... Basting your turkey all Christmas long. <laughs> we almost got through the whole show. Oh, so close. <laughs> you were so close. Just like... <laughs> Oh face. my god! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what has happened? <laughs> I'm barring me, I think it's I think it's the ladies. I'm not even joking about this. Like, it's just it's just the ladies that we have on these podcasts. It's not me. I thought it was me. But it's not me for us. It's really not. Uh, Snarkle has blessed us this holiday season. <laughs> I'm never having any male so guests sorry. again. That's it. We're done. And to all a good night. <laughs> I, I just couldn't resist. I don't see Rook go red much because that's up. not possible with your complexion very often. But damn. <laughs> twice in one podcast. Twice in one podcast. Is it even oh, awful? I, I didn't think I had limits. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> If there's anything being anything spicer on this channel, everyone, but uh, you're going to be able to listen to it and watch it all over the internet. So that's great. Uh, if you do want to watch the uh, YouTube, uh, the VOD, the, um, to see who went red at that moment, you won't be able to see Rava, unfortunately, or for next, but you get to see myself, Aurora Peachy, and uh, Rook potentially going red at different moments of time. Um, thank you very, very, very much very much for watching the guild wars 2 podcast and there's going to be a slight uh, little thing over everyone's face for a second i'm sorry about that but i want to have some music on our outro have a good time make sure the the, the least you do for the rest of the year and also just for the rest of your damn life be good to people be kind and uh you know i this is a hard season for a lot of people so check in with people please okay just check in with them haven't heard from someone for a long time send them a dm in game send them a message on uh you know skype <laughs> or some other aol messaging service <laughs> somewhere <laughs> contact people uh serious though like <laughs> You know, look after them yourself. On Skype. They yeah, will never yeah, get the yeah. message. That's true. Well, the world you Skype. Skype. <laughs> message them on Discord. Discord, <laughs> that's the one. Sorry, my old age is showing. Um, but in MySpace, yeah, well, it's definitely more viable nowadays than ever, probably. Um, 
Thanks so much Rig, for watching. Everyone, do a wave if you would like to. I'll see you in 2023 for the Hi. next Lightbringers podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>